Hey everyone, welcome and uh, welcome to Spindle TV and I uh, hope you're having a good evening. Um, I'm glad you can join me, you could join me tonight. Uh, tonight we have kind of a mixed bag of a couple of things. Number one is last class we did a uh, game night kind of class where we did a cribbage board and we were going to do a euchre box and everything. I took so long on the cribbage board, I didn't get to the euchre part of it, and I was like, man, I want to do that. And I tried to get to it like a Friday night class. I tried to get to it like a Saturday night class, and it just, it was one thing after another as far as, you know, con uh, support calls and stuff like that for Digital Woodcarver. It was just a busy, busy time. Um, and I couldn't get to it. So I'd like to do, a, I'd like to touch a little bit about uh, that tonight. But I'd also like to talk about some designing aspects in the Vetric software. Um, I want to give you guys and girls something to think about uh, when it comes to creating in the software, creating shapes, geometric shapes, and all kinds of cool little patterns and designs and stuff. And uh, uh, it could open up the door to a lot of possibilities. One, it makes you really good at uh, creative design, uh, you know, being able to lay out and come up with, you know, different patterns or different layouts of different things and everything. Uh, and knowing, just knowing, uh, maybe not the exact approach, but how to approach those kind of things. Um, and uh, I'd like to give you a little bit of insight on that. And, and uh, I'd like to do a couple of little you know, nice little cool patterns and stuff with you. And um, we'll see where the night takes us. If you have any questions, uh, definitely ask. And uh, I'm happy to answer. If you do ask a question in the chat, put a question mark in front of the question so I can identify it uh, with the group. Um, but we're probably not going to have a whole lot of viewers tonight because probably not a lot of people wanted to see the closing of the uh, or the continuation of the game night, you know, they want to see other things other than game boards and stuff like that. But, um, I, uh, I want to touch on it. I really do. And, uh, it's, it's, it's a quick and easy little project. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, Hey, big daddy fish. How you doing, buddy? Uh, John Thompson, Roger, David, Ronnie, David. So David Pingle and David, uh, Heineck. Uh, Doug and Brooks and Dave Krause, how y'all doing? Um, thanks for joining me. There's only a few select in the crowd tonight. Uh, everybody's probably tired. I'm exhausted. Oh my gosh, today was a brutal day mentally. But I really want to show you uh, what I've been doing the last couple days. And uh, I want to show you how to make some cool creative shapes. And I want to make a euchre box. <laughs> I really do. Um, and uh, there is uh, not sure, but there's no sound. Uh, check one, two. Please tell me I just did not go through that whole monologue without any sound. Tell me, let me know if you have sound. Um, and uh, if we have sound, then Therence, Lionel. You need to check your audio. So sound check. One, two, three. Somebody in the chat, let me know so I'm not wasting my breath and talking with no sound. Thanks. John Thompson. Euchre, Big Daddy Fish, what is Euchre? Um, John Thompson, thank you very much. Sound is fine, good, sound is good. All right, so uh, Therence, um, can somebody uh, tag Therence in the chat and tell him to check his audio because sound is good. Um, but Big Daddy Fish, what is Euchre? Now, first off, Euchre spelled a really weird way. Uh, is E U C H R E, and it's a card game. 
typically uh, uh, four players, uh, two partners, and the partners sit opposite of each other, uh, and it's a it's a card game uh, and uh, very simple scoring and stuff like that. But uh, uh, it's fun. It's a really fun game. I used to play in euchre tournaments down here, uh, and I think it's generated up north. It's a northern kind of game. I don't think it's southern, um, but uh, E U C H R E. If you ever get a chance. Type a Google search how to play euchre and look at the like the, the game rules and stuff. It's a fun game. And we're going to be making a little euchre scoreboard and a little box to keep the cards and stuff in. And uh, that's what we're about to do right now. So let's jump over to... Let's jump over to channel two. Um, it is a really fun game. Uh... All right, we are on camera two, and let's get me down in the bottom right corner, or bottom left corner, should I say. Let's not screw it up this time. Awesome, I'm down here. Hello, how y'all doing? <laughs> All right, so we are going to create a new file. And on this file here, I'm going to go um, with a... Uh, a euchre box uh, and, and scoreboard and everything. I'm gonna go um, about, let me break out my ruler here. This is all done on the fly. There's no pre-designing or anything like that. I'm gonna go about um, six inches, six, six and a half inches wide and uh, about 12 inches tall. Now, the Let's go, uh, oops, let's create a new file. And let's go six here, 12 there, and everything. That's not gonna be the right aspect ratio. Um, now, if I can remember how to do this on the fly, I'm gonna create a box here that's six inches by six inches. And I'm gonna throw that box right here. And I'm gonna take a line, a line, and I'm gonna draw a line from the center here to a diagonal over here. And then I'm gonna rotate that line. I'm gonna grab the pivot point here and I'm gonna pivot off of that position right there. And I'm gonna pivot down, oops. all the way down till it's a straight line here. And that location right there, that gives me an aspect ratio of the golden ratio. The golden ratio is a very pleasurable viewing experience. It's in all kinds of architect and everything and oops, uh, architecture and everything. And so that size there is going to be six by 9.7082. I'll round up 9.75. So nine and three quarters. Uh, so we're going to go and change our size here to nine and three quarters, 9.75. And this shape here, I'll bring my shape up and I'm only off a little bit, but this shape is, went from a pleasurable look to just that little bit through it whole off. I'm <laughs> oh, just kidding. But uh, that shape, that, that rectangle versus the 12 by six is more pleasing, right? You, you find it a lot, the golden ratio, the golden ratio. 
You find that a lot in uh, different architecture and design. And I want my box designed based on those dimensions, right? Cool. All right. Thanks, Terrence. All right, Therence. Cool. So now on my box, this we're going to do a box here. Um, and I'm going to have other parts and stuff, some scoreboards and stuff like that. The lid is also going to be a scoreboard. Um, and uh, or I could decide to go the route of something like a decorative lid and uh and and then uh, have the scoreboards on the inside and all but uh my material <clears throat> excuse me is not going to be three quarters of an inch thick i'm actually going to go a little thicker than this uh number one uh deck of cards is going to be uh about five eighths of an inch thick and it's about two and a half inches wide three and a half inches long okay and <clears throat> excuse me i got a frog in my throat all of a sudden um, even though my deck of cards is only uh, five eighths of an inch thick, I want to, I want a little bit of, I want a little bit of space, a little bit of meat right inside this kind of box, if you will. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, I would like to have this box. I'd like this box to have a little bit of a nice flare to it. Uh, where it's not square, where the edges are just ever so curved, okay? And um, I will show you an example of a Euchre scoreboard that, that's really pleasing to my eye um, that has kind of that flared shape to it. Um let me pull up the game night image. And while that's loading, while that's loading up, we'll, uh, I'll drag it on the screen when it comes over. But if I were to drag this over here, okay, you see how this this uh, simple scoreboard here, and ours it's the Euchre scoreboard is a very simple scoreboard, but um, you see how it has kind of that curved edges and everything. To me, it's really pleasing. I, I like that kind of. I like that look. I like. I'd like my box to have that kind of curve to it and you know and the radiuses I like as well too right so <clears throat> on here what I'd like to do is I'm gonna make my board slightly wider because I want the flare to come out I don't want to make my board any skinnier than it already is right and everything uh, so I'm gonna take my job set up here and on that six inches wide I want just a subtle subtle flare so I'm gonna go six and a half, and that'll give me some little playroom, uh, but I'm not gonna go too extreme, okay? And what I'd like to do is in node editing, I'd like to take these lines here, and I'd like to turn the side lines into an arc. Uh, in node editing, I'd like to turn it into an arc, and I'd like to pull that arc out to the edge here. Turn this one to an arc. Pull that out to the edge there. Just a subtle, you know, just that quarter of an inch, you know, just a subtle arc. Nothing crazy, right? And then when I do the radius, that's really going to be, that's really what's going to kind of pull everything together and stuff. Now, I could do a subtle arc on the top and the bottom as well too, and then radius to that. And if I were to do that, what I would want to do is, I don't wanna go any larger than this board here. So I would go, I would undo my movements, right? 
and I would take my rectangle and I would reduce it in size vertically by that half an inch, right? So on that nine and three quarters, I will change that to nine and a quarter. And I'm going to uh, then center that onto the material. And then I'll do all four sides. I will go into node editing mode. I'll go to an arc and I'll pull that arc just right to the edge of the board. This side over here to an arc. Pull that arc back just to the side of the board. Up here on this line, your mouse has to be right on the line and don't get on the middle point. That center point, because if you go, it won't give you the right menu options, right? You gotta get on the line. So when you right click on the line in node editing mode, uh, you'll get those, right, those correct menu options. I wanna go to an arc and I wanna pull that down to the top of the board there. Down at the bottom, right click into an arc and I wanna pull that in there. And now I'm gonna take my sharp corners and soften them up some. So that's called a fillet when we take corners and we, we round them off. Uh, that is a normal fillet. We're, we're adding a fillet to the, the, the curve and all. And what I'd like is I think I would like to go with a uh, one and a half inch, uh, one and a quarter to one and a half inch uh, fillet. Uh, so one point, I'll go 1.25. And a normal fillet, and over here when I come and click on this, I want to just round that off, right? Over here, put my mouse over the corner and round that off. Over here and over here. Okay. Now all together the lid, let's make the board, the whiteboard a little bit wider so you can see everything nice and clear. So I'm going to take on my whiteboard and I'll make it uh, on the width. I'll go six and uh, let's just for right now on the width, let's go seven. So you can kind of, and let's go seven by eight. Seven by, seven by, not eight, seven by uh, 10, 10. All right, just so you can see that vector and you can see that, that shape that we've created. So just a very, very subtle, nothing, nothing you know, crazy about it, right? Just, but just nice subtle contours and curves. Hey, Big Daddy Fish, thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that super chat. Ladies and gentlemen, the way you want to support the channel and support me and everything is those super chats or super stickers down at the bottom of your comment area. There's a little dollar sign where you can uh, donate and stuff. And uh, that's a big shout out. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right. Now, um, the... Uh, on this lid, this is going to be not only the lid, but it's also going to be the shape of my entire box, right? And everything. Uh, so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to um, create the vectors for all the different compartments and things like that. And uh, we'll go from there. So first things first, my top is going to be uh, have a... Uh, a lip, if you will, or kind of, you know, like a, a an inset that, you know, when it closes and all, uh, it's going to inset and it's going to inset on some magnets and stuff. So there'll it'll be a magnetic lid. And um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have it uh, sit on like a, a quarter inch lip. <clears throat> so I'm going to take this vector and offset it inward by that quarter of an inch. Okay, and uh, in this area here, in this area here, um, I'm going to take a circle and I'm going to, I, I'd like to have, um, 
I've got these quarter inch diameter magnets, little art rare earth magnets and everything. Um, I'm, I'd like to have like a little island for it to kind of sit into, if you will. Uh, so I'm going to create a, a circle with a diameter of a half inch, 0 0.5. And I'm going to throw that um, here just for a moment. But what I want to do is I want to kind of move this down and uh, to this inside line here. And I'd like to bring it up. Imagine if I have a quarter inch, let's put a quarter inch in there. My magnet, all right, so let's try that again. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's put a two right there and click that. So my magnet's here and everything. What I'd like to do is um, uh, I'd like to take these two shapes here and I'd like to bring them just a little bit closer, okay? And I want to take an arc and I'd like to just have a subtle arc nothing crazy I can't have that because it, it goes it, it overshoots so let's control Z let's try that again better and I'd like to mirror that uh, uh, flip it about the job center flip it over to the other side a copy of it so I'm gonna go to the mirror tool and I'm going to flip about job center, create a mirror copy, and flip it horizontal over here as well. And I want to take my scissors, and I want to trim away. Oh, not that. Don't trim that away. I want to trim away this. Uh, and notice right here. Hold on a second. Let me let me let me back up for a second. If this circle is centered, is that circle centered? I'm just off center. I knew that I was because when I mirrored that line over for the center, it didn't make contact. So I'm just off center. So let me align that up. Align left to right. There we go, just to bump that over. Let me bring this arc. Let me just bring that up. Nice little distance there. If I overlap, it's okay. I'll, I'll, um, I'll trim it, but I want to mirror that to the other side. There we go. And this time when I trim with my scissors, okay. I want to make sure that my overlaps and everything that I don't have any and all and I want to make sure that um, that it's not so hard harsh on these corners and things right uh, that it's not just so so harsh and all so I'm gonna just go to my fillet tool again and this time it's gonna be an eighth inch radius like if I was using an end mill and I'm just gonna smooth that off there and smooth that off there okay now, if I look closely, I don't know if you can see it from a distance uh, on the screen, but when I'm zoomed out, there's a bit of an anomaly right over here on my screen. And I'm going to go into node editing because that's where the end of the line is. And I want to zoom in and I want you to see that there's an overlap. So if I pull this line up a little bit, you can see there's an overlap. And I could see that. When I'm zoomed out, I could see it was showing that there was something, you know, there. And I don't know if it's the same on the other side. No, it's not. So over here, this overlap, I'm going to drag this green node back to this black one. Right there. And I'm going to make sure that I'm closed. 
I am. It'll let me know. I will be now. And that way I've got that, you know, that shape there, right? So I had the overlap when I mirrored that over one way or another, it didn't just quite land, you know, as it should. And it created an overlap and, and the software, when you're zoomed out certain times, it'll, the, the line, it'll show like there's almost like a double line. You can see it. You might not, it might not translate well on the camera or on, on the screen or anything like that, but uh, you can see it. And uh, my eye caught it and that that's what made me like focus on that. Um, that particular area and stuff. Now, I want this, I want this to be the same down here, right? Because I want two magnets, one on each side and all. And so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to, right on the center line here, I'm going to cut the vector on this uh, center point. I'm going to do the same thing on this point here. And I'm simply going to delete this lower half and I'm going to mirror this upper half. I'm going to flip it vertically, create a mirror copy, flip about job center, flip it vertically. And I'm going to take those two halves and I'm going to join them together uh, to make sure they're closed. But before I can join them, I've got just a bit of a, again, an overlap going on there. And I need to pull this line down to here, snap it to there. Same thing on the other side. Pull this down over to here. And what that indicated or indicates to me is that I want to see if I'm I'm quite centered. I want to see if I'm quite centered. So I'm what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to the alignment tool and I'm going to go up and down, align up and down on the material. And I don't move, so I am centered. But for some reason, I must not have trimmed it center. I don't know. But uh, it was just off a little bit. And I think it was because of this shape right here instead of a you know it just being that nice shape there. I don't know, but I trimmed it incorrectly. All right, so this is going to represent my pocket. Let's do a little bit of a tool path so we can kind of get the, a handle on things. So let's go over to the tool path side of the software. We're going to have a pocket cut for the two magnets. They are going to cut a, uh, they're actually a, a quarter inch thick and quarter inch round. Um, so we're going to go uh, 0.25. We're going to use an eighth inch end mill. We're doing a pocket cut. Uh, it's not a drilling operation. Oversized hole, undersized bit. So I'm not going to use a quarter inch end mill for this. I'm going to use an eighth inch end mill. And this is going to be my magnet base. My base magnet holes. Okay. And we can preview that. All right. So we're there. Now we're going to create our pocket cut. And on this, on this material and everything, um, as I said, my material right now is currently three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, I'd like my material to be a little bit thicker. Uh, I'm going to just go with one inch, uh, thick stock and I'm going to find a nice, I got a, I pulled out a piece of, um, uh, hickory that I think I'm going to use for this, um, and uh, it's, it's a little over one inch thick, but by the time I plane it or surface it, uh, it should come out at one inch thick. So we'll go one inch. And uh, so on this pocket here, my card, my deck of cards, and all, like I said, is going to be five eighths there. And for those of you that are into um, metric and everything, I don't know what that is a metric, 18 millimeters. So, um, the, but we're going to go with a pocket cut and I'm going to go, I, I'd like a, just a little bit of breathing room, right? So I'm going to go uh, with a three quarter inch, uh, cut 0.75. 
and I'm gonna use a quarter inch end mill. I'm gonna remove that and use a quarter inch end mill, larger end mill. And that end mill is gonna be taking an eighth of an inch per pass, that's fine. This will be my main pocket. Now, I'm not just gonna do this big old pocket. That would be boring and all that. I, I wanna make compartments in here for the cards, for the pegs, and also I have some game boards and all, right? But for right now, just wanna kinda of give it a visual and all. I'm gonna create this pocket here, uh, but that's not gonna be my final pocket when I'm done, right? Right, exactly, John Thompson. Usually the overlap will be darker than the line next to it. When you're looking at those pink and white dotted lines, you know, when something's selected, if you look closely, you can see the darker pink uh, than the other areas and stuff. Now, if I were just doing a, um, a simple box or something like this, you know, uh, that would be that, right? Right, right, but we're not doing a simple box. Um, what I'd like to do is... Um, we're going to, inside of here, uh, we're going to have a, a compartment for the deck of cards. And um, that deck of cards, uh, like I said, is, is two and a half by three and a half. Typical, a standard, just a standard deck. It's not an oversized deck or anything. But typically, it's about two and a half inches by three and a half inches. Um, that's, you know, um, the card size, not the box size. So a little bit more for the, the, uh, the tuck box. But... Um, uh, for this, I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh, with an opening um, of uh, we're gonna go two and three eighths, two and three quarters. Sorry, two point seven five by three point seven five. I'm just gonna throw that on the screen. Okay. Now the I'm gonna drag it with my mouse. I'm gonna grab it in the center and drag it with my mouse and just kind of snap it over here for right now, just to kind of get that uh, that general fill and area and everything. Um, and uh, down here, I want to create a scoreboard. Let me let me draw it over to the side. But here's what I'd like to have. I'm gonna draw it over to the side is I'd like to have three little scoreboards. Um, they're going to be uh, five by five square. Let's try that again. Five by five. Okay, square. Uh, there's going to be a little, let's find the center of this square, find the center. Uh, we'll have the screw there. Have that. Have that. Point one. Now. I'm going to align these, this circle with this circle. I'm going to align it left to right, align to selection. Okay. So that way it's centered up and down on there. If I align to the center, it would fall right there, right? That kind of thing. Uh, but um, let's move that back up. There. Now, I'm gonna take a polyline tool. I'm gonna to click on the side of this circle here and I'm gonna draw a polyline. I'm just gonna hover the mouse over the large circle and I'm gonna hit the letter T for tangent on the keyboard and it's gonna to snap to the two tangents, spacebar to finish, of the circles. I'm gonna click on the circle, click on to anchor the line Hover, don't click on the second circle and hit the letter T for tangent to snap to the tangent spacebar. And then I'm going to trim here. Okay. 
cool beans, cool beans, right? Now, I'd like to, uh, we're going to draw a line right here. And on that line, I want to center it left to right. Whoa. Goofball. I want to center it to this box left to right. You son of a gun. <laughs> this button down here will get me. There you go. I want to center it left to right to the box. That's the line to selection. I kept hitting the material one up at the top. But uh, what I'd like to do is I'm going to use this line to create the, because this line has a center point. When I double click on this, there's a center point right there. And that center point gives me a snapping point. Okay. You'll see where this comes in in just a minute. Um, and what I'd like to do is um, I'm going to go around. This is going to be zero. All right. And um, we're going to go around 10 times uh, to 10. So zero to 10, which is 11, right? 11. So if I come in here and by the way, this object, this circle right there, that is center of this rectangle. So if I align to the center of that rectangle, that's center. And this object left to right, everything is all centered, right? Um, imagine if you will, that this is going to be a dial that I can um, that I can turn to keep score on the different points from zero to ten, right? It's a little dial that I'll be able to turn to keep score, you know, uh, for zero to ten. Not only will it be a score te keeper, but also our trump cards and everything. What you know, what suit is trump? Uh, you know, heart spades, diamonds, uh, you know, clubs and that, that kind of thing. Um, but this one is going to be the scoreboard. This one here is going to be the scoreboard. And uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take this and I would like to create a circular array around, where's my center point? My center point is going to be the center of this object. Okay, so this center point here. That's what I'd like to rotate this part around. And in order for me to, I want to drag that down and snap it to this center right there. So that should have recorded that center point. And I want to go around 11 times, okay, or 10 times, 11 times. And I'm going to click copy, okay, to create those. 11 positions. Now, if I did my math right, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, good. That's what I want. Okay, now I want numbers. I want numbers to be there uh, and everything. So I'm going to go into my text box and by the way, this part is going to be a part we're going to be cutting out this shape here. We're going to be cutting out. And this hole is going to be just a center hole uh, for a screw, right? You know, a screw to screw into the bottom plate. Hole. And the bottom plates aren't going to be that thick. Just nice little scoreboards and all that will fit inside the box. Um, but the uh, in here, uh, I'm going to go one, enter, two, enter, Three, enter four, enter five, enter six, enter seven, enter eight, enter nine, enter ten, and zero. I forgot zero, but we'll put it at the bottom there. So I have these numbers in a row. Now I can take these numbers that I just created in this row or this line, and these rows. I can right click, and since I put them all on their own line, I can break the text block that I just created into text lines. And now each one of those numbers are individual items. Okay. Cool beans. So zero, lucky number zero. We're going to come over here and snap that. Ah, dog, if I didn't get the damn height of the text right, right out of the gate, and that wasn't even planned. Uh, but that's good. That'll work. We'll, we'll go with that with the numbers. <laughs> that wasn't intentional. I didn't even mean to make it that high. That was good. Um, 
Okay, so I'm happy with that um, and everything. Now, I want my numbers and all. I could bring them in. You know, uh, let me let me pull this out here. I could bring them in, and I could just snap them to the center of my line, right? And I could bring them in where they all look like that. But I actually kind of want the numbers to follow the line, right? To follow the line, to follow that angle and everything. So what we're going to do is, uh, let's undo that, move that out of the way. We're going to take our lines, these lines, and this number, because we're going to bring the zero with us, and we are going to rotate based on our center point. And let me get this uh, center point actually snap to the center there of that circle because that's what we're rotating around. And I need to go three a relative distance. I need to go 360 degrees divided by 11. Hit equals. And I want to click apply to rotate to that next line. I'm keeping that rotate box opened up. So I don't have to keep opening and closing it. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to snap that one to the center of my line. I'm going to select my lines and stuff. We'll take and turn this off. I'm going to group these two together later, but not right now. And we're going to rotate, okay, um, one more time. Now, I want to keep that coordinate. I want to keep that center point um, on that circle. Bear with me a second. Do, do, do. want to keep that center point and um, I should write down that number because my point there we go that's the center and that coordinate for me I'm gonna write that down I'm gonna write that down it's uh, 10.8918 and 2.6841. Now, I need to undo what I just did because when I rotated, when I rotated, I moved. I, I, I had I had something deselected and I moved. I shifted it. It wasn't it didn't stay centered, right? So when I'm rotating, I need this to turn on its center. okay? So once again, let's do this again. Let's get our pivot point back over to the center of our circle here and keeps changing on me, but we're going to rotate that one time around. There we go. And the actual rotate point is not what I had before because that was off. It's 10.911. 10.911 by 2.6893. 2.6893. Okay. All right. Let's get our number one. And I don't know what the number one's deal is, but uh, he is crooked as all be it. Let's get him straightened back out there. Let's get him snapped on there. All right. All right, I'm going to take two steps back just to go forward. One, two, over here. Get over there. 
All right, I want my one to stay right where it is. For some reason, it was selected when I was rotating, and that was a bad day. So we, we're already starting off with a little bit of a headache because it's on me. Uh, all right, let's one more time. Let's turn this off, turn this off, that off, get my pivot point back. Okay, get that center going there, that pivot point, and let's rotate 360 degrees divided by 11. Rotate. Now, get that number one going. Grab it on the center, snap it to the center line. Select everything. Turn off what we don't want. By the way, let me do that right now. I want to click this and this, and I want to group those two items together because I want to be able to, when I select this, I want to be able to click and turn that off, right? So when I come in here and select this, I want to be able to click and turn that off and just have this selected. All right, on my pivot point here, again, I want to make sure that I'm at 10.911. and 2.6893 and I want to rotate to the next line grab the number two throw it on there snap select everything hold the shift key down deselect we're on a roll now look at there chicken dinner all right we're going to rotate again based on this 10.91 now this changes this number changes every time I add something new to it. So we got to make sure we stick with our original number. 2.6893, 2.6893. Rotate to the next line. Grab number three. Snap to it. All right. We'll get everything all centered up and all that stuff in just a minute. And everything, if, it's, if anything, is off because uh, it looks like we're off just a little bit. But select everything. Hold down that shift key. Hold down that shift key. Deselect. 10.911. 2.6893. Rotate. Grab the number four. Stick it there. Select and go. Rinse and repeat 11 times around, ladies and gentlemen. Rinse and repeat 11 times around. Six, eight, nine, three. Two point six, eight, nine, three. Grab that number five. Snap to it. You can kind of see where we're heading here, right? Can you draw a circle through your center line? Then put your numbers on that circle. I could. I could. I could. I could. I could. Right? So what the question is, is could I draw a circle on the center line there and could I put the, the, the lines on, I'm not sure what the circle, it, it, it makes no difference, but yes, you could, right? It doesn't do anything for me as far as rotation or any of that stuff, but yes. All right, 10.911, 2 2.6893. 360 degrees divided by 11. Rotate. Next up. Snap. Okay. So rinse and repeat all the way around. Almost there. Don't want to waste too much time. Six, eight, nine, three.
Whoa. Hold it there, Haas. Hold it there. All right, just a couple more, a couple more, eight. Two more, two more, and we can move on. And you get the gist, you get the gist. All right. 10, 9, 11, 2.6893. And rotate number nine, lucky number nine. Snap right there, and finally, our final one, Let's move that up here on the screen. Okay, so turn that off. And our last one, 10.9.1, whoa, 10.911, 2.6893, and number 10. Okay, now, I want number 10 to be at the top. I want number zero to be at the right. So I'm gonna leave it just like that. Okay, so we'll start off on, they'll start on zero and they'll work their way to number 10. 10 is the win. All right, and um, that little guy right there, I'm gonna go ahead and select all of this. I'm going to, uh, I don't need the lines. anymore so I'll just go through and hold that shift key down and click 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 one two zero ten nine eight seven six and hit delete to get rid of those now this part right here I'm gonna keep that uh, ungroup that uh, this part here is going to be an actual part that's going to get cut out and my screw hole I don't want my screw hole that big. I want to size that screw hole down uh, To I'm gonna go um, Quarter of an inch Actually, I'm gonna go eighth I'm going eighth of an inch. Three sixteenths. It's just going to be like a pilot hole. Now I'm going to group those two items together. Uh, group. And that's going to actually be a part. I, mean, I need three of those bad boys. I need three of these because there's going to be uh, three different scoreboards. Okay, so I'm gonna hold down my control key and I'm gonna drag out two more right there. And I'll, I'll create another board because I gotta create another sheet to cut these parts out on and those parts are gonna go on there. So these three parts, these three parts are going to be cut out in the three squares. So I'll have three of these, okay. And, um, This other one, bear with me. All right. So, oh, you son of a gun. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Hold that control key down when you're dragging a copy. Hold that control key down. All right. So, I'm going to have... Uh, two scoreboards, one for each team. So we'll have two scoreboards here. Uh, what I do want to do is, uh, let's do this really quickly. Uh, I'll take that little trainer peg with me. Okay. And these uh, numbers are going to get V carved into the board. And this little pilot hole right here. 
uh, this little pilot hole right there is going to get uh, a, a V-bit, uh, just a nice little dimple uh, there uh, to show me where it'll be like a little, um, like a little uh, dimple for my screw to go into, almost like a little where I can pre-drill and stuff so I don't tear nothing out. Um, this bad boy right here is going to get copied and pasted, control C, control V, and uh, that way I can move that over there. And then I can take this one, the original here, and I can delete this and just keep my circle. So there's my two scoreboards there, right? And this circle, just so you know, is in the center. That circle is in the center of this uh, shape here and all. And so I need one more. Hold down that control key and snap it to the center of that one. That one's going to have... The trump cards. Now, I'm not the greatest at drawing. I'm not the greatest at drawing, you know, uh, card uh, suits and all that. So I'm going to import a bitmap image. I'm going to import a bitmap image. And on that image, I'm going to use the trace bitmap tool. Trace bitmap tool. I'm going to turn the fading off. I'm going to slide this to 75, default corner fit, default noise filter, and I'm going to click preview, apply and close. I'm going to turn off that bitmap layer and there's my vectors for my suits. Let's bring them over here. Now, let's... Uh, very simple. I want to size these up a little bit. That's good. And I want to ungroup them so they're individual. Righty eyed. All right. Now, I'm going to take a line once again. I'm going to take a line. And oh my God, did you just see that? Something, <laughs> something just flew up my nose. <clears throat> All right. I, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please excuse me for a moment. So I had the doors open to the house today so the animals could just kind of play. It was a nice, beautiful day. I had the doors open, letting the air cross breeze and everything. And I had some flies in there. And one of them literally, I don't know how it got into my house here, but it literally <laughs> just went up my nose. All right. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, on this suit, I'd like to have this right about there. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this center line here and I want to snap it. Let's see here. Yeah. About right there. And I'm going to just uh, make sure that I'm centered with my center line. I don't care about the suit right this second. I'm going to make sure that I'm centered to this rectangle. <laughs> I can't believe that happened. Um, and let me move this suit out of the way now that I had it positioned. Um, and I'm going to take this line. can't believe that. And I'm going to take the center point of this line. I'm going to snap it down. I don't know why I just moved the line. Bear with me. I'm going to take that pivot point and I'm going to drag it down to the center here on my board. And I'm going to rotate that thing around four times, okay? So I'm just going to go with the circle rotate. And I'm going to rotate four times around. Okay. And um, I'll put spades on top here. So we'll go there. 
Now, I'm not going to do all the fancy rotating and all that stuff. I'm just going to snap to the center line here, and I'm going to hit the number 9 key twice to rotate it. Okay? And snap to the center line here. I'm going to snap to the center line here, and I'm going to hit the number zero key twice or the nine key, whatever the case may be. Now, I could decide that I'll just keep them vertical, right? That would probably look, you know, be much more smarter, right? Um, so we'll leave it at that. We'll leave them vertical. No rotation. All right. So this will be my trump. So I'm going to put some text in here. And uh, we'll go. I could do like what's trump. <laughs> I don't know. Let me see here. I don't know. Do I want to do what's Trump? I'm not sure. Uh, so, um, what's Trump? Because that's what they always ask. Uh, T R U M P. We'll just go Trump. And uh, we'll go um, 1.25. I'm going to center that align left and right to this rectangle. <laughs> Did it again. Left to right. There we go. All right. Cool beans. And um, I could have done like what's Trump, you know, or whatever, but Trump is fine. And uh, the um, I don't need to really do anything, you know, too crazy with this, but I would like, it's boring right now. Okay. It's boring right now. I'd like it to have a little bit of decoration to it. Okay. And, uh, so let me see if I'm missing any, anybody's questions or anything. Uh, I can see it usually the overlap. Uh, I did have a line of seven. You missed, missed the seven o'clock tick mark. Yes, I did. I did. I did. That's why I backed up a few times. Good catch. Can you draw a circle through? Yeah, okay, so good. The chat's been kind of quiet tonight, so I think either either I'm boring you to death or uh, you guys are just watching and paying attention. <laughs> but um, uh, I'd like to add a little bit of a decorative element into the uh, corners here, but I want, I want it to be a consistent theme. Okay, I want it to be a consistent theme uh, and, uh, I, uh, I want my lid, the lid of my box is going to, uh, to have this, this decoration on it as well. Cause the lid, which we haven't drawn yet, let's get, we'll get the vector for the lid here. Let's hold down the control key and pull that to the side. This will be the lid here. This is where our scoreboard is going to be. We're going to keep score here too, but we also have this, these portable scoreboards, right? And somebody might say, why you got two scoreboards? What's the point of that? You know, and everything. Well, the, these two score kind of cards, if you will, that, but you know, they're made out of wood. Uh, these two score cards, you know, each team will have theirs, you know, one, one person will be in control of it. And then the Trump card, you know, the Trump scoreboard kind of system able to show what's Trump and all that stuff, but there's still, there still needs to be some backup on the scoreboard. So we're going to, we're going to have a, a scoreboard on the, on the backup here. And so the, uh, uh, here we're going to have a nice decorative, uh, d decoration all let's get some text in there first, right? So let's get some text up here. And, uh, Euchre is E U R C E U R. I, I, I do that all the time. E U C H R E. Euchre. 
and it's not all capitals um, backspace E U C H R E okay and we're gonna go with a one and a half inch tall text I'm using a Black River bold font here it's a really nice kind of elegant font for me and I want the uh, euchre I want that centered left to right on this here oh I did it again centered left to right down here line to selection ladies and gentlemen I don't know why I'm not getting that tonight but uh, I keep hitting the wrong thing but a line we're aligning to a selection another object so we want it center left and right there now, I, for me, I think I want uh, the word euchre. Oh, man, my nose is itching. I want the word euchre at the uh, bottom. I want the word euchre at the bottom. So I want to bring that down. Here. And I want to make sure that I am centered left to right. And I am. And I don't want to be down too low because I do want to put some decorative uh, decoration right around the edges and everything here. Now, when I talk about decorative recreation and all, hey, Roger Brown, thank you, man. I appreciate that super chat, brother. <laughs> thank you very much, man. Um, the uh, When I talk about decoration and everything, let me give you a glimpse of what we're about to look at if you stick with me here in a little bit. Let me right click and open up another VCar Pro. And um, let's go to um, open an existing file and let's go to Let's try that again. All right. Stay with me. Stay with me. Maybe trunk text on a circle. Yeah, could do kind of a curve and everything. All right. So this is my cribbage board. Let's take a look at the 3D view of it so you can get a little bit better view here. Uh, preview all the tool pass. This is my cribbage board, excluding the lid for the where the cards and the pegs and stuff go. That's on another uh, page and all. Um, but let's turn this around here, and let's turn the let's let's increase the quality so it's not so pixelated. Let's come in here and let's try that again. Preview all tool pass. So this is the cribbage board that I created, and this is the we're going to talk about geometric shapes here in a minute, how to create different shapes and everything, and uh, the shapes <coughs> that we can use for decorative borders and stuff. Uh, some of it stems from you know this design and everything uh, that I made. So tonight. Wait for it. Wait for it. It's like a magic disappearing cribbage board. How weird is that? Ladies and gentlemen, my cribbage board's disappeared. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. View. Preview simulation quality. There's our board. Look at that beautiful board. Look at that beautiful bean footage. Okay, let's go preview all tool pass. There we go. Now we're cooking with some gasoline. Now we're cooking with some gasoline.
This is my. F <laughs> um, my uh, Fuzang um, Long Fuzang Long cribbage board. Fuzang Long is the uh, ancient uh, Oriental dragon that uh, is the protector of hidden treasures and uh, man-made, both man-made and um, uh, mythological. Uh, he's a mythological dragon, and uh, he is he possesses the uh, magic uh, pearl which is his prized possession, which is the most prized possession and everything. So that's the Fuzeng dragon, uh, Fuzeng Long. Uh, the Long dragons are these oriental type dragons. They're referred to as Long dragons, L-O-N-G. Uh, and this particular dragon's name is the Fuzeng Long. Now, this decorative border here, I'm gonna teach you how to draw that from scratch. And these decorative corners, I'm gonna teach you how to draw that from scratch tonight. And so, if we to add some color to this to get it to pop a little bit and everything, um, I'd like to have my scorecards and my euchre card and all to have some kind of nice decorative corner and everything to it, uh, and or, or or just some kind of flourish or decorative design and stuff, right? And so that's um, you know I'd like to have something here, but I want it to be a consistent theme. I want it to be a consistent theme throughout. Uh, and um, the, uh, one thing that we can uh, do is, and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be, um, It doesn't have to be crazy or anything, but it has to be, I'd like it to be, you know, somewhat nice. Uh, it's because I have kind of a rounded corner here, that kind of, uh, you know, uh, gives me, you know, something to uh, work with and all that stuff too. And what I'm going to do is I have some corner vectors that I'm gonna pull into the software. I have some corner flourishes, I believe I do. Let's import and da 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 I do, I do, I do. We'll take this one and open that up. All right, I'm going to utilize this. Uh, we're going to adapt. We're going to adopt it a little bit. We'll change it up. But we're going to trace this image here. And on this image, we need to either do a color trace or a black and white trace. But we're going to turn the fading off. Always turn your fading off. So that way you can see, you know, your image. Now, 75 is my maximum threshold for me. Uh, 50 to 75 is kind of the range I work with on uh, graphics when I'm tracing them, 75 being the max. So that's, I'm going to stick to my, what, what what's worked for me over the years. So on my threshold, on my black and white threshold, I'm going to go 75, uh, default corner fit and all that stuff. I'm going to click uh, preview, apply and close. Preview traces it, apply, locks it in, close, close the tool. Um, I'm going to turn that bitmap layer off and I'm left with this kind of vector here. Now, I want to, if I bring this in, okay, I have two choices for myself. One, I can scale this up. I could decide if I want to rotate it and have it as the, not that big of course, but I could have it, dun, 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 as the, uh, on the sides, and of course it's not gonna have this straight line in here. I could have it on the sides and all, but that's my scoring area, so I want the top and the bottom. So it's gonna be the top and the bottom, and I want it to flow with the curve. 
So what I want to do, let me get it sized down here for a minute. In here. I want to get it centered left to right. I want to position this up here. And I want to uh, take and distort this object. And uh, with the distort tool, you can distort text, you can distort objects, you can distort anything. And all, and it's just going to be a subtle distortion, but it's going to be, you know, something. And I want to come up a little bit more, about right there. And um, when I distort this, before before I distort this, I want to make a copy of it because I'm going to use the the leaves later on. Okay, I want to use the leaves on those scoreboards, not the whole thing, just the leaf parts. But when I when I take this. I'm going to select it and I'm going to go to the distort tool and I'm going to put it inside of a bounding box. So in that bounding box, it's basically like sticking it in an envelope. And whatever I do to that envelope, it's going to kind of do it do it with it, right? And everything. Now, I have a choice. I can distort with the bounding box or I can distort with a single line or a curve or between two curves and that kind of thing. And I'm putting it in the box because basically all I want to do is I'm going to put this as a kind of an arc. Let me get rid of the center point. Uh, kind of an arc here. Not that dramatic of an arc. Just a very subtle arc. And I want to smooth the, and of course it's not going to let me smooth. It's not that type of uh, type of uh, curve, if you will. And I just want a nice, subtle flow, not too crazy, not too dramatic. You know, just a nice subtle curvature. And. something along here and I want to take this object and I want to uh, let's draw a center line let's find the center line on our part here now that's not the center I don't think I don't believe that's the center so what I want to do is I want to select that I want to select this and I want to align it to the center of that object and it didn't move it's there so yeah that's center okay now my line that I drew needs to be straight I want a straight line so I'm going to go into node editing mode and when I align these nodes I select the one I want to align to first Hold the shift key down, select the one I want to align last, and I need that line to move up and down. So that's the Y axis on my uh, you know, screen, so I'm gonna hit the letter Y to pull that into a straight line. Now that it's a straight line, now that it's a straight line, now I'm gonna center it to the object, make sure it's centered. There we go because I want to take this object here I want to flip it about that line so go into the mirror tool and click on flip about line and I want to put it down there okay now if I want the word euchre someone said you know I could curve the word euchre and all that stuff if I wanted to curve the word euchre uh, I could use the edit text spacing and curve tool and I could pull that you know kind of a, a subtle curve Oops. Right? Just so it has a little bit of a curve. I don't want to go too crazy, right? But just in, instead of straight, maybe just a subtle curve. Right? So it has a little bit of a better flow. 
Okay. And for my decoration, you know, for that, as far as that's concerned, I'll be happy with that. We'll make it look a little fancier uh, uh, in a little bit uh, with adding, um, well, we'll do it now. So I'm a big fan of the spades. So I'll keep that at the top. We're going to align this to the center of this. We're gonna align to the center of that object, like that. We're going to offset the spade, offset outward. I'm gonna go a 16th of an inch, not a very big amount. And I'm going to take my object, I'm going to group my object together, but I can't group it because it's still in what's considered the envelope. It's still inside the envelope. So I need to right click on it and I need to convert it back to curves. I need to bring it back to a vector and get it out of the envelope. I'm done distorting it. So I need to right click and convert to curves. Then I can group it back together. Okay, and I want to select that offset of that spade and I want to use my trim tool and I want to clear inside the boundary. The spade is what I selected last. That's the boundary. I want to clear that out. Then I can delete that boundary and then I have that shape there. Okay, how you guys and girls doing? Y'all hanging with me? All right, cool, cool. All right, so that's gonna be the top. Now, I'll go ahead and for this uh, next one, we'll grab the heart. And if I select the heart, I select the object, I want to align to the center of that object. Okay. Now it's aligning to the center of the arc, you know, because the object is curved and on. I don't want that. On this one, I actually want to kind of lower it down just a little bit. Just about right there. Okay. And once again, I'm gonna offset outward a 16th of an inch of the heart. I'm gonna right click to convert to curves again, cause it's in that envelope, break it out of the envelope. I'm gonna group that object together, select that boundary and trim clearing inside the boundary. And then I'm going to delete the boundary. Okay, and that's it. That's going to be as far as my decoration is concerned, right? As far as that goes. Okay, all right. Now I need to create two rows of um, two rows of uh, pinholes, and uh, uh, for the pegs, let me let me show you the pegs that I got. Let's see if you guys want to go back into full view here for a minute. Uh, full, go to full for a moment. All right, for my view, uh, let's grab, we'll just grab one of the rose colored pins. So this pin, let me see here. Well, it's gonna, what's gonna give it a better view? This little pin here, Okay, that little pin there. Let me see. Does this, that little pin there, it is one inch long. 
a quarter inch diameter at the head and it's tapered to fit into an eighth inch hole. I got a uh, 20 pack of these, you know, they're uh, five for each color. There's black, silver, uh, rose, gold, and uh, gold, right? And those colors and everything. So those are the pegs. Now for the cards, I haven't gotten the cards yet for the Euchre game. I'll get those, but I did get the cards for the dragon cribbage board. I went with the whole theme, so I got the dragon uh, deck of cards, dragon cards, you know, to go with the cribbage board, the dragon cribbage board, because it's, it's a whole, that's a whole theme for me, so I ordered that on Amazon, the cards and stuff, and, uh, but let's go back to the bottom left corner here, and the, um, on the holes here um, scored a you know a game you know 10 games kind of thing so we're gonna go with a quarter inch diameter hole point two five point one two five not a quarter inch an eighth inch diameter hole um, and let's zoom in nice and tight on this and let's see if uh, Let's do this. Let's create some layers. Let's get on the whiteboard. It'll make it easier for your viewing pleasure. Uh, let's move this over. <coughs> Excuse me so much. Uh, let's create the sheets. Let's add a new sheet for sheet two. This will be my lid. Uh, we will add another sheet uh, this will be my game boards or scoreboards. We'll call them scoreboards. Score, even though the lids have got kind of a scoreboard too. Scoreboards, and uh, sheet one is going to be renamed to the base. Now I'll resize the scoreboards in just a minute, but I want to take the lid, and I want to send that, move it to the lid sheet. And I'll take the scoreboards for right now. All of this stuff here. And I'll move that to the scoreboards sheet for now. But on the lid sheet, let's make that active. Let's get this centered on to that board. Aligned to the material this time. So that way, when we're looking at this, when you're looking at this, you can see it a little bit more clearly, a little more clearly for you. Okay. Cool beans. All right. Let's get everything cleaned out of the way here. So on this eighth inch circle, what I'd like to do, I'm going to have two rows. Uh, we're going to go from here to here. And I'd like to have a spacing in between the two rows of three eighths of an inch. So I will off, uh, not offset, I will copy and paste that line. And I want to move that pasted copy relative. I want to go three eighths of an inch to the right. That's a positive number, 0 0.375 to the right there. And we'll, the circle will, uh, we'll put this circle here just for a second but let's get some text in here this is going to be these two lines are going to represent the games one by each team okay now i want a uh i want a half inch tall text is fine this is going to be here. And I want these two. Let's see. Should I do. Centered. All right, let's reduce the spacing between the two lines. Let's go a little bit smaller. I'll go 3 eighths, 0 0.375. 
on that. And I'm gonna go into the Edit Text Spacing and Curve tool. Edit Text Spacing and Curve tool. And we're gonna put our mouse between the lines and I'm gonna reduce the line spacing. I'm just gonna click to reduce the line spacing. I'm gonna, oops, don't do that. Make sure that you don't, uh, make sure it says line, line when you're clicking. Line, line when you're clicking. So that's gonna be good. Nice, decent spacing there. Uh, let's get that into position. I'm happy right there. Now I want my two lines to be grouped together because I want to center them on this text. So center them left to right on that text. There we go. And I'm going to bring those lines down right there. When I create the copies of the 10 holes on these lines and everything, when I create the copies of the holes in the line, the first hole is going to start right, the center of that hole is going to land right on the end of the line here. And the last one's going to end on the end of the line. I got to keep that in mind when I do that and everything and, um, and stuff. And so the, you know, the spacing between the lines and all that stuff, make sure that, uh, you know, I've, I've got the, uh, the length I want, the spacing, all, cause there's going to be 10 of them, you know, 10 of those and all. So let's do it. Let's ungroup. We'll do the first one. We're going to be copying along a vector, copying along a vector. Everybody buffering? Somebody's buffering? Put an arc on Trump. We'll do that. We'll look at that. Um, we're going to be taking this object. We're going to be selecting this line. And we're going to go 10 copies on that line. Okay, we're going to take that circle and we're going to go here. We're going to go 10 copies on that one. Okay, that's going to be my two rows for my scorekeeping. Good there. Uh, Ronnie, I don't know why you're buffering. Is anyone else buffering? Let me know. Let me know. All right, we'll set that aside for a minute. On those layout lines, um, I could, I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of all my lines onto another layer. Layer's a great way to keep things, you know, intact and all. Uh, I'll end up um, moving them and the other lines uh, to a layer called uh, layout lines or, you know, paths. We'll just go layout lines. Uh, peg hole here. Let's just do this peg hole layout lines, All right? And um, I'll turn the visibility off for right now. We'll make them red so we don't need those visible. Okay. Now the uh, on the games one and everything, I want to add some numbers in here, uh, one through 10, right? Uh, and stuff like that, not just the holes and all. And because of that, you know, now that I've said it out loud and everything, I want the numbers to be in between the circles. I don't want them on the outside on one side or the other. No, I want them in between the circles. So I'm actually gonna open the circles up a little bit, space them out a little. And I'm gonna take my text tool and I'm gonna do the same thing I did earlier. One, enter two, enter three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, right? Now, I actually wanna go from bottom to top, not top to bottom, okay? And so let's 
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Oh, you son of a gun. <laughs> the whole time I was hitting the shift key and not the enter key. Let's try that again. Uh, 10, 9, hitting that enter key so it goes to the next one. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right. Now, the spacing and the size of these numbers, I want the numbers to be a little bit bigger. Okay, I want the numbers to be a little bit bigger. So uh, instead of the 3 eighths, I'm going to go 0.5. Okay, a little bit bigger. Right? Uh, and I want to break the text block into lines. Okay. And I think, I think I need to, I think I need to go, let me undo that so I can do it as a group. I think I need to go not three eighths, not a half somewhere in the middle. Let's go 0.4. 0.4. Yeah. 0.4 will be fine. All right, so I want to break the text block into lines. Okay. Now, I'm going to take and select these two circles. Hit the G. G is group. U is ungroup. Keyboard shortcuts. You're going to learn some. G for group. I'm going to select these two circles. G for group. These two circles. G for group. And I'm going to group my two pairs. Group. Group. Notice that when I'm selecting the circles, I'm making sure that the number is not in my box 100% so it doesn't select that number, right? Okay. Now, I'm going to take my numbers, move them over here for a minute. All right. One at a time, hold the number one, click on this group. Let's open up the alignment tab and align to center. One. Number. Align. Center. Two. Number. Group. Align. Three. Number. Group. Align. Four. Group. Align. Five. Let's get our numbers moved down here. So we can zoom in. Zoom in. All right. Number. Hold that shift key down. Select that group last. Hit that line to center. Six. Number. Group. Line to center. Seven. Eight. Ha! Ah. Got to group that together. Okay, hold that shift key, select that group, center, eight, nine, and 10. Okay. All right, all right. Good, good. Thanks for letting me know, guys and girls. Okay, so now I've got, you know, numbers in between my scores, right? So we group those two circles and we align the number to the center of that group, right? And that's what align them up. So we now have our games one column. Okay, cool beans. Now, the uh, for each hand, there's a score, one through 10. There's a score for each hand and everything. And uh, for this, uh, we're, um, we're going to, uh, each team, there's two teams, so there's going to be two columns and, uh, each hand, uh, the wins per hand, right? And the wins per hand, when they get 10 wins, they win one game. Okay. So that's how it progresses. You win a hand, a hand, a hand, a hand, a hand. And when you get to 10, you win a game, you know, that kind of thing, you know, right, right, right. All right. So we're going to have a column for the hands. And we're just going to call it the uh, win column or hand, hands one or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and uh, rounds one, we'll just call it the win, 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 
Win. Okay, wins. Um, that's what they normally call it in the Eucharist, the wins and stuff. So, sorry. Um, all right. First and foremost, I'm missing my heart. Remind me to put my heart back over there on those cards when we get there. But uh, I want to take the trumps or the suits, should I say, and I want to copy those. And paste. And I want to drag those copies over here. All right, I need to move this heart or copy this heart to the uh, scoreboard sheet. I need to go click on the scoreboard sheet for just a minute. I need to get my heart over here. And on my heart, Here's my little cheat for this so I can find the exact spot where this belongs without having to draw a line and all that stuff and everything is if you remember we had a line that we snapped to the center of the line so I'm going to just draw a line from here to here I'll have a center point there and I'm going to draw a line right here down the middle and I'm going to take this line here I'm going to hold down the shift key, select this line last, and I'm going to mirror that line by flipping about the line over to there. And that will give me the position that my heart needs to snap to. Okay. Once I have that position, then I can delete the three lines. Okay. But now I need a copy of these two guys. I need to copy them to the lid sheet. Go back to the lid. And on my four suits, I'll resize them. Show you how to how we're gonna size them. Okay. We're going to go um Uh, we'll uh, do put that there, that there, that there, that there. You'll see how I'm going to space these in just a second. Now, what I'd like to do is I'm gonna select all of these four uh, suits here and I'm gonna to go to the size tool and I'm gonna size by scaling them individually. I'm gonna scale them individually and I wanna scale them by percentage and I wanna just go 75% their current size, okay? I wanna bring them down 75% their current size and I'm gonna take a line and I'm gonna snap a line from here to here, my center points over there, because I wanna use that to my advantage. And I want to select and move that line right there. Let's get my circle out of the way. That's my circle, I'll need that in just a minute. But these four suits, I wanna select them first. I'm gonna select this line last here and I want to go to the alignment tool and I want to align them vertically I want to space them equal distance vertically on that line and then I want to align them center on that line okay so the space between the top of the line is the same as the space between each of the suits which is the same as the space at the bottom of the line there right so spaced and centered on that line okay it would look very good brooks martin with inlays save 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 yeah i haven't saved none of this guys save early save often i'm bad about that when i get on a roll let's go save as and let's call this our uh you 
Gur box. And sorry, this shouldn't be taking two hours here, but um, A U C H R E box. Save, save early, save often. But yes, would look beautiful with inlays, right? Uh, absolutely. Um, would look absolutely stunning with inlays uh, and everything um, and all. Now, here, this is going to be our trump row. This is going to be our trump row. Uh, and I have four circles. I need four circles for each of the suits. So one, two, hold that control key down, two, three, four. And I'm going to grab five and put that over there. We're going to need it again later. And on this, basically, I'm just going to drag this straight across just to right about there. And I'm going to take these guys here and I'm going to hold down my shift key and select this line. I'm going to go to a line up and down. And I'm going to center left and right. But I'm not going to center with the line this time. I need to center with the actual suit. Right? So I'm going to take this peg here. Hold down this last. The spade last. And align up and down. Center. Select this circle and the diamond. Align up and down. This circle and the club. Align up and down this circle and the heart align up and down okay all right and um so that will be that and this is going to be the trump And I want to take, if I group just one of these objects together, because they are centered on each other, I'm going to take this objects and I'm going to kind of group them together. And I'm going to select Trump and I'm going to select this and I'm going to line left to right to that last selected object just to center over those two objects. Okay. And then, of course, I'm going to ungroup those. They don't need to be grouped. All right. So on the trump, we're gonna I'm gonna make the trump just a little bit bigger. There we go. And I will align it up and down with this. Okay, so it's in a row there. All right. What do you think? Looking good so far. Good so far. Good so far. Now we have two more rows. These are our win-win rows. These are the hands. The hands one, right? So uh, when a player or team, you know, when they when they win ten hands, they win the game, kind of thing, right? So uh, for this, again, I'm going to have two rows. So I'm gonna hold the control key down and drag a row out. I have no particular spacing right here right now. I have no particular spacing at all. But what I would like is I would like to pretty much be consistent with these here, right? Um, and every, you know, at, at five hands and 10, you know, five hands and everything and 10, those are significant points and all. So what I'd actually like to do is I could actually take this here since it's got my numbers and everything and everything in there and I could actually get rid of this I can take this hold down my control key and bring that over straight across now I'm going to, uh, we're going to spread things out just a little bit because uh, this is going to be a little bit wider, right? So let's take and ungroup these objects, ungroup. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it, move it to the left, 
an eighth of an inch. Now when I drag this to the left, I'm going to type in 0.125 and hit enter and just move it that eighth of an inch. I'm going to select this, move it to the right, stop moving, keep that left mouse button held down, 0.125 and hit enter to move that to an eighth of an inch to the, to the right there to kind of spread that out a bit. And um, the, as a whole, let's group that all back together for a minute. I want to make sure that it's aligned with this, right? So I'm going to group this together for a moment. So if I select this group and align it up and down with this group, align up and down, we're we're even, so we're good. So I don't, I, I'm done. I can ungroup these. I don't need them grouped. And I'm hitting the letter U on the keyboard. Okay, the letter U on the keyboard to ungroup these things. All right. Cool means. Okay, so now here we're going to go um, with the text. Um, do I have any Uyghur players in here? Give me just a moment. I got to cheat for just a second. Got to cheat for just a second, ladies and gentlemen. Um... Let's see here. Uh, partners make Trump's on making Trump wins three or four tricks. Uh, five tricks. Give me just a second. I'm so sorry. Give me just a second. I am going to call this not hands one. That's a bad term. Uh, let's go just wins. If I find a better term for that, I'll, I'll ask my guys and girls what, uh, um, okay, we'll leave that at that. All right. So now I kind of want, I kind of, this is throwing me off that this is off to the side here. Uh, I kind of want to take this. And I, I really kind of want to align it left to right. Not that much, not that much, not that much. I kind of want to split that like right there. And then again, I want to select this and group it together and I want to align Trump to that. All right, that's going to be my lid, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be the lid. That'll be the lid. So let's create some tool pass on that. Gosh almighty. All right, let's create a tool path on that. So on the lid, we're going to have a, uh, not this bad boy. On this area here, we're going to do a V-carve tool path. 
No flat depth, 60 degree V bit for me. You can use a 60, 90, whatever you want to do. Uh, but 60 degree V bit, and uh, we're going to um, do the flourishes. Calculate. Okay. And uh, on the text and the suits, the larger text and suits, should I say, the larger text and shoots, suits, uh, I'm going to, uh, on the VCAR toolpath, I'm going to limit that. I'm going to give it a flat depth, and I'm going to go just an eighth of an inch. And if you have a, you know, a laser, a digital laser, this would look good lasered as well, too. Very good. Or inlaid, you know, you could, you know, be creative and, and stuff. Um, but 60-degree uh, V-bit, calculate. Had one of those circles in there. Let's get that circle out of there. Remember, I grouped this group right here together. And so let's take that, this, that, and that. Make sure nothing else selected and calculate that. All right, reset the preview, preview the visible toolpath, and preview all toolpaths, should I say. Okay, so, so far so good. Uh, our text, our smaller text, the smaller text, no flat depth at all, no limit. Flat depth is a limit of the cut. No flat depth, we're not limiting the cut on this, just straight 60. Uh, I could go with a 22 on these numbers, but there are they're large enough that a 60 will give me some definition uh, and stuff. Let's turn off the color for a minute so you can just see the here. And if I go to the simulation quality, let's go to an extremely high simulation. Let's preview those toolpaths really quickly again so it's not so blurred. This will give us about a 98% representation of what our project will look like. Tricks. Tricks. So, 10 tricks wins a game, right? You win 10 tricks or you can go you can win 5 and you can win 10 and tricks wins the wins a game, right? Thank you very much. It took me a minute cuz I'm like I'm like why am I not getting it right? So, the proper term might be tricks instead of win. Tricks. I don't know. What do you think? Tricks instead of win, win? <laughs> I don't know. Let me know. I'm up for anything. Um, what I do want to do is there is a separation on this. Uh, on this group here, I do want to bump that down just a little bit. And I do want to bump this up. Just a little bit, not much. And I want to put a line right here. Now, this line, I want this line to be kind of almost like center to center on these holes. And then if I take these two holes right here and I group them together, I can actually take this line first and select that group last and I can align up and down to make sure I'm dead center between those two holes, right? And then I can ungroup those. Letter U to ungroup, because I don't need them grouped because we have five and 10. So uh, yeah, yes, tricks. Uh, so yeah, so that is correct, tricks. So I should say tricks instead of win up here, right? Right, tricks. I think so. And I don't know if I need to specify tricks for each column. Tricks, tricks, or I could just do one heading. Right? Tricks. 
I think I can just do one heading. I don't think I need to specify win win. Tricks one. I could do like games one, tricks one. Or I could just do tricks. I want it to kind of balance out. Edit text spacing and curve. Remove that spacing, space, space. Click, 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 boom. Nope, don't do that. Click, click, click. Now, I do want to break this up into two lines. Break into lines because I want to move the W over, the one. I want to move that over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I want to go up a little bit. Like that. Oh, I'm going to do that. All right. And I want to take this and I want to align it to the center of this 10. And I want to take this, group it together, and I want to align it to this one up and down what do you think tricks one works for me that works for me yeah I'll be good with that okay uh, let's go back into our V carve and let's change that since we, you know, our smaller fonts here. So this, recalculate. All right, reset that preview, preview all the tool paths. I don't want it to be too late. I know it's late, guys, uh, but I do want to show you, I, I want to show you a couple of the geometrics and geometrics and if you if you like it then maybe we'll have a class on it in total uh, we're almost done here we just got our holes to drill so we're gonna select our holes our holes 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 now what I found with these pegs and everything is that a depth of 0.45 with an eighth inch end mill works just fine for these so Peg holes, calculate, preview the visible toolpath. And then the final thing is going to be our profile cutout. Now, of course, this is a two sided job. I got to flip this over. I got to carve the, the, uh, the magnet holes on the bottom side and I've got to, um, and I've got to, uh, carve the kind of the, lip if you will um, this area here is going to be sitting down uh, and the lids gonna sit into it a little bit it's gonna sit on the rim and all we'll take a look at that here in just a second uh, but for right now just for preview purposes mental preview purposes I'm gonna do a profile cut I'm gonna cut all the way through which uh, on a two-sided job I would do the back side first before I cut through, but I'm going to go 0.75 uh, with a quarter inch end mill. And if you need some soda or an energy drink or anything right now, uh, the next part, the geometric couple of it will tax your brain just a little bit, not much, but stick with me. I think it'll be fun. I think you'll like it. I know it's late, but let's calculate this. Let's cut this shape out. I just want to cut it through just for the preview, right? Now,
my lid, my lid, if I go to my sheets, my lid is not one inch thick. My lid, if I edit that, it is three quarters, not one inch, 0.75. And it actually doesn't even need to be that thick. I think half inch will be fine. All right, on that lid, on that profile cut, we're going to be cutting 0 0.5, 0 0.5. <laughs> um, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. His bed, he's a big old boy. His bed is right here next to me uh, lately. And uh, he, he was whining. He wanted to get up there. All right. Lay down. Okay, so let's try this again. We're going to recalculate all these tool paths right here uh, for this new lid size. So really quickly recalculate that. Uh, put the peg holes in the center of the suits aligned to the middle of the base and balance everything out. JR, that's not a bad idea. Um, okay, you can't get on that. <laughs> you can't get on here. You gotta lay down if you wanna lay down. Okay, the, uh, that's not a bad idea. Let's preview all the tool paths here. Let's see what we got and then we'll, 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 we'll look at that idea about aligning the holes in the center. So of all the years, if you've never seen uh, my cat before, that's because he's a new addition. He's a new addition. This is Milo. Say hi, everybody. Say hi, Milo. Say hello, everybody. Say I'm a big Tomcat, and I beat everybody up, and Lainey was nice enough to take me in, so I didn't have to beat everybody in the neighborhood up anymore for the rest of my life. I could live comfortably. Right? Right. All right. So, on the trump, someone's saying, you know, put the peg holes in the middle. And if I wasn't carving them, if I wasn't V-carving them, that would be a good idea. If I was just doing an outline of them and all. Let's see. Let's see here. Let's take the word Trump and align that left to right. All right, here's what I'm gonna to do to balance things out. Uh, I'm going to, <laughs> you gotta get down. You're a distraction. Come on, we got work to do. It's been three hours, guy. All right. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to draw a line. Right here. That little line may not be, may seem like it doesn't do much, but it's about to do a lot. I'm going to take that line and I'm going to mirror it. A mirrored copy of it. And I'm going to flip it horizontally about the job center. Okay. Now. I'm going to group all that together. I'm going to select this line last and I'm going to align that left to right. Nope. Nope. If my holes were spaced Okay. All right, we're going to balance this out a little bit. We're going to balance this out. Ungroup this, select this, delete, 
select this. Mirror Yeah, it doesn't Nah, undo, undo, undo. It doesn't uh it doesn't bode well. Um, if I take the suits, align them left and right, it just, it just throws the balance off too much air gap over here and everything. So we'll leave it just as it is. We'll leave it there. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yeah, we'll leave that there. So it was a good suggestion, but it just it's not popping. It's not popping right. Okay. Yeah, multicolor epoxy fill. Absolutely. You know, that would look great too on these suits and everything. All right. So that's going to take care of the scoreboard on the front side here. Now, very quickly, let's go ahead and... Uh, uh, flip the switch. We're going to go to our job setup here and we're going to make this, um, a two sided job. Okay. And we're going to make this a two sided job. It's recalculating all the tool paths for everything. Still got my dividers I need to do in here. The game boards, they've got to fit in here. I'll show you that in just a second. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, on this two-sided job here, uh, let's go to here really quickly. Oh, don't do that. Stand by a minute. There we go. All right, save. Let me hit save because that scared me. All right, I need to take this, this, and this and group it together. And I need to copy that to that lid sheet. Okay. And imagine, if you will, that... This is going to be recessed a small amount. My lid's going to sit down in it. And there's going to be a lip. And so what that means for me is I need to create the vector for that, that lip. If this is my profile cut, and this is how thick my wall is gonna be on my box. That's how thick my wall is gonna be on my box. Then I need one additional vector if I offset that inward that's gonna actually represent my pocket. It's actually gonna represent my pocket. I've got my wall. Why, why am I getting stupid all of a sudden? I've got my wall. That pocket is gonna be recessed down. If I just recess that down My lid sits on there. Yeah, okay, yes. I need an additional vector. 
N word, and I'll go on that. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. Um, and that is a whole lot. Let's go an eighth of an inch. I'm going to split the difference. I'm going to go 3 sixteenths. Then we got to move it, move it, move it. All right, I'm happy with that. All right, that vector also needs to be copied to the lid sheet. Oh, where'd that go? Let's try that again. Copy, not move to the lid sheet. All right, let's do a toolpath really quickly. This... area here this area here this and this is going to be a recess down just a small amount it's going to be a pocket tool path and i want a nice clean edge okay here bear with me i now know what i'm doing my mind is back on track here i need a nice clean edge for this pocket here and if i just do a pocket cut between these two vectors this edge is going to be kind of rough looking so I'm going to take an offset inward, this line, uh, literally a 30 second, 03125. Okay. All right. Now, between here and here, these two vectors, between those two vectors, I'm going to do a pocket cut, and I'm just going to go down a quarter of an inch. You can go a quarter, three-eighths, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to go a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to use for this, my quarter inch end mill should fit there. Nope, let's use the eighth inch bit. Let's use the eighth inch bit. And this is gonna be my inside recess calculate all right preview the visible tool pass so that's going to just bring that down now i'm going to have a pocket cut and in order to determine what i want my pocket cut to be i need to grab my one of my scoreboards and I'm just going to grab the rectangle part of the scoreboard. And I'm going to copy that to the base. Now my scoreboards, they're only going to be cut out of small, thin, quarter inch material. And there's going to be three of them. And they are five by five. And right now, five by five, this is gonna tell me what I need to do and everything. Five by five is a little much. So I may need to bring these down some. Scale them down just a little bit. Five by five, I thought five by five would be a good fit, but it's not. So let's size this down and that, that'll dictate my three trays. Let's go four by four yep four by four okay now on my uh, pegs the pegs are um, one inch long quarter inch at the widest part of the head now there's going to be uh, two pegs that are used uh, to keep track of the games one. So two pegs are kind of racing to from zero to one to 10. There's gonna be one peg that keeps track of the trump suit and then two pegs that keep track of the tricks one, okay? And so the um, that's a total of five pegs and that's what I bought. That's why the kit that I bought uh, is 20 pegs and each color 
uh, is five of each. There's five of each of those colored pegs and stuff. Right? So, a little 20 pack there. But, um, so, there's going to be five pegs used. So, I'm going to have five pegs and uh, that's all I, you know, all I'm, you know, needing to store and everything. And those pegs are only, um, again, they're only one inch long and a quarter inch wide. So I don't need to be all crazy about, you know, uh, uh, you know, a big, a big bundle of these and everything. So I'm going to basically go, um, uh, two and a quarter inches on the length here. And on the width of the height, in this case, the height, uh, the, I'm going to go about 0.625. And those five pegs will, they'll, they'll lay in there just fine. 0.625. Okay. And I want that centered. Not that kind of centered. I want that centered in here and so I'm kind of anal about this I'm gonna draw a line from here to here and I'm gonna take this object and I'm gonna snap it to the center of that line and then I'm gonna delete that line so this is kind of gonna be my pockets here and everything for my scoreboards they remember they're gonna be four by four um, not five by five my cards will go into here and I've got a little play, extra play for the cards and stuff. And I do need to create a little thumb hole. These two objects here need to align with one another. Okay, and I also want them to align <coughs> up and down on the center of that rectangle, that last object I selected. Okay, and I want to weld this shape together. Okay, that's going to be for my cards. Now, on that 4x4 four four, uh, pocket area and everything here, that four by four pocket area and stuff. I'm gonna go a little bit bigger because I need. I can't have it like an inlay, like a damn tight fit, because my game boards are gonna be four by four. So I'm gonna take the size of this, and I'm just gonna. I don't need a whole lot of room. Uh, I'm gonna go four and an eighth. My four and an eighth. Okay, and I'm going to bring this over just a little bit bring this up just a little and again gotta be i gotta I gotta do it i gotta draw a line here and i need to align this to the center of this line All right, so that's going to be my three pockets in here and everything. Now, this whole thing has gotten recessed down. This this lip area here has gotten recessed down an eighth of an inch. And um, I am... Uh, on this inside pocket right here, not that one, this one, this inside vector right here, I'm going to be bringing that down too. And these pockets are going to get cut deeper, of course. Um, but the whole surface in here is going to be brought down. So I'm going to take that surface there. And I'm also going to bring it down to an eighth of an inch. So the I really didn't need this vector right here. All I needed to do was select this vector here and do a pocket on it. So that inside recess, all I really needed to do was select this and calculate it. 
Now, I would have needed those two vectors if I was going to have just a big old void in there, you know, a big old hole. But that's going to just bring that down that eighth of an inch. Now, let me stop this. I'm going to turn the volume down just a little bit. Not the volume, but the, the quality down a little bit so it's a little faster because I want to kind of move along. Preview this toolpath here. Thank you, Troy. <laughs> um, multicolored epoxy pop for a pop. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so this is going to recess down this eighth of an inch or that quarter, should I say. And then from there, my pockets, these three guys and girls, these three things are going to pocket. They're going to start I'm going to start them at an eighth of an inch. You'll see why in just a second. And I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down five eighths. We're going to uh, use a quarter inch end mill and an eighth inch end mill. I want the eighth inch end mill for the nice small radius corners and stuff like that. But I do want a quarter inch end mill for time. And uh, offset will be fine. So these pockets here. Now the reason why I started at an eighth is because this pocket right here, I don't need it to be a quarter of an inch deep. This recess, I don't need it to be a quarter of an inch deep. I only need it to be an eighth of an inch deep. Just a small recess, just a nice little hook. Um, so what we should see now is we should have a little eighth inch recess, which you're going to see right here. And then our pockets are going to start at that eighth of an inch and they're going to cut down to five eighths, which will be a total from the top three quarters. And that'll give me plenty of room for my cards and everything. Now, if I wanted more room in between these walls and stuff like that, um, if I wanted more space in between those rooms, my card holder doesn't need to be that big. It's, I, I made it a good little bit bigger. Now, my magnet holes, my magnet holes, When that lid sits down, it's going to be sitting right on top of this. Let me put a, let me do a profile cut on this profile tool path, cutting all the way through the material on the outside of the line. I'm not going to add any tabs to this for preview purposes, but I will add tabs later down the road, preview the visible tool path. My lid is going to sit right on top, butt to butt with this outer lip. The lid is going to sit right on top of that. The magnets are going to snap it what snaps it in place to keep everything nice and even so it doesn't slide from side to side. So my magnet holes Okay. Let's get rid of that and that and that. So my magnet holes are uh, there and they're they're a quarter inch deep for those little magnets. So that's going to be my kind of my case, if you will, that's holding the cards. It's going to hold the little scoreboards, those little spinners, you know, scoreboards, like twister spinners or whatever. Uh, you know, it's going to hold those and my pegs. Okay, now those same vectors. I need I need these vectors. 
I'll determine which ones I want to use and all that stuff. But I need these vectors. I need to copy them. And they've already, I've already copied some of them. So I'll have duplicates here in just a minute. I'll create it for myself. But I need to copy them to the lid sheet because what I want to do now that we have the base is done. So that's the base. Okay. I know, I know it's getting late, guys. Sorry, we're going to wrap it up here shortly. I know it's getting late. But uh, that's the base. So now let's go back to the lid here. And on the vectors, wait for it. On these vectors and all, we're going to copy them. Or, I'm sorry, not copy. We're going to move them to the other side. Move to the other side. This one's going to get moved to the other side. This one's going to get moved to the other side. They do not need to be here. And this doesn't need to be here. Move to the other side. Okay. So all I need is my lid with all my little decorativeness right there. But on the other side, flip this bad boy. The outside. Hold on. Let me flip it back. Flip it back. I got my got to get my profile over there too. This gets copied to the other side. All right, flip that back. So the lid, the base of it is going to be here, right? Between these two. That's going to be the base, the rim. It's going to be sitting on top. And this vector in here between here and here is going to be recessed that eighth of an inch. So you would think that I'm going to do something here, but I'm not. I've got to do something between these two lines. Okay, between these two lines. All right. And so the between this line. Let me ungroup this ungroup between this line and this line. And now I want a nice clean path. So I'm going to go offset outward a 32nd, not inward Laney, outward. go and we're gonna create from here to here we're gonna create a pocket an eighth inch deep okay here and here we're gonna create a pocket an eighth inch deep pocket eighth inch deep I'm gonna use just the eighth inch end mills fine calculate hold on there's there might be some duplicates it's saying let me see if I got some duplicates I knew I was going to have right click select all duplicate vectors right click and delete get rid of them okay make sure everything is nice and closed up good okay one more time on that pocket toolpath we're gonna calculate now this is saying this vectors may contain overlaps uh, or intersections which may lead to results. And now there is no overlaps or intersections here, but what there is, there is zero length spans, meaning that there are two nodes put together with no vector line in between them. How do I know that? Because I know that there's absolutely no overlaps or intersections in this drawing as of right now. But if I went to do the vector validator, and I search the selected, I'm going to have four zero length spans, meaning there's two nodes together without a span in between them. So all I have to do is click this button here and clear those out. That'll clear that up. And that way, when I calculate the toolpath, I won't get that warning anymore. And the only reason I knew that it was zero length spans because it was a process of elimination. There's absolutely no vectors overlapping or intersecting in those two selections that I had. So the only thing left that it could be that would throw that error is a zero length span, meaning that there's two nodes together with no span, line, arc, or curve, or anything in between them. And that cre that those zero length spans got created when the uh, when the offsets were created and stuff. All right, so now in the lid. We're going to in the on the magnets here, they are gonna the magnet pocket holes 
are going to start, the magnet pocket holes are going to start at that eighth of an inch because we've already milled that material away and they're going to go another quarter because that's how thick they are. Calculate that. All right, preview that visible tool path. Okay, let's do a preview cut. You know, start to kind of get a little bit of a visual here. Let's do a, a, a profile cut, cutting the part out. Profile, cutting all the way through the material on the outside of the line. And my lid's only a half inch on this board. Calculate. Preview. All right, if I get rid of the waste. Now, my inside of my lid here, I still have some meat. If I wanted to take away a little bit of clearance for the card, like if I was worried that my deck of cards was gonna be sticking up uh, and keeping the lid from opening, I could I could do a recess here. If I was worried about my three score cards when they're stacked on top of each other, because remember, they're gonna be about a quarter inch thick, right? Do the math here with me. They're going to be about a quarter inch thick. The little spinner on them is going to be about a quarter inch thick too, right? That little spinner, that little pointy thing. It's going to be it's going to be a little thick too. So, they're not going to quite they're not going to quite sit flat. They're going to they're going to have they're going to have that uh, spinner thing, you know, kind of recessed on it. Unless I was slick and I flipped it over and I did a little recess on the pocket so they all fit, they snap together kind of thing, but I'm not going to do all that. That's just too much. But if I was worried, you know, when they're stacked together, they're going to stick higher up. Remember, my pockets are three quarters of an inch deep. From the top of the board, they're cut down three quarters of an inch. So that's three quarters of an inch. Now, if I have a quarter, quarter, quarter board, but I also have those little spinners on top of it, and then they're going to stack, they're going to be wobbly and all that stuff, but that's, you know, they are, you know, but they're going to stack a little higher. So then... I would want to recess the inside of the lid there to compensate that. But now as it sits right now, this area is going to sit down in that opening on the box. This outside edge is going to sit on the outside lip. And then my magnets are going to hold everything down, right? Yeah, we're going to do alignment holes and all that. And I've talked about alignment holes, you know, for flipping and everything in the past. I just haven't created them yet, uh, Big Daddy Fish. Sorry about that. Um, and uh, so I could say, okay, you know, here's our lid, right? That's our lid. And it's also our scoreboard, right? But let's go back to the, let's go back to the other side. Flip back to the other side for a moment. Let's go back to here for a moment on here. And, you know, this, I'm not worried about the cards. The cards aren't going to stick up. That's only five eighths. It's going to be sitting down. There's not going to be anything stacked up above that. So the cards are good. They're not going to stick up. But the little holders and everything, they, they are. They're going to stick up a little bit. Unless I made them like eighth inch thick material or something like that and all, but I think quarter inch would probably be a little bit more stable. So I'm going to take this vector and I'm going to copy it to the lid sheet. I'm going to go back to the lid sheet. I'm going to move, flip that, move that not move move to the other side i'm going to flip to the other side and then i'm going to take that pocket and we'll do a small pocket a shallow pocket cut 
and we could go a quarter inch deep. And uh, for for time, let's add in the quarter inch end mill. Calculate. And what that'll do is um, that'll just create that little recess, that little clearance, if you will, right? So we, you know, if they do, because they are going to be sticking up a little, you know, it creates that little bit of clearance and everything. So that's our lid. So we have our lid, we have our base. Um, so the lid. Wait for it. It's simulating, simulating, simulating. All right, get rid of our waste. That, that, that. Now I'm just going to add some color just for visuals purposes and everything. Uh, visualization purposes. All right. Now I've got some issues. <laughs> I've got some issues. My peg holes are 0.45 inches deep. My material, my peg holes are 0.45 inches deep. They got to be. My peg holes are um, right in the same, in line with that. And um, no matter what side I put that on, I'm going to see peg holes there. Right now, that uh, that poses a little bit of a dilemma. Um, my material I decided on, you know, a half inch thick, so it was, you know, lid, so it wasn't so um, so bulky. This is cutting down a quarter of an inch. My other parts are cutting three quarter. Or I mean, uh, 0.45, so let's call it a half inch, right? Half inch and a quarter is three quarter minus some, right? So if I changed my material to a three quarter inch thick, I wouldn't have that problem. Let's do it. So quickly go to sheets, lid, edit. 0.75 it's only going to be a, a half inch or you know a 0.625 inches five eighths of an inch it you know when it's sitting on the lid and all so that's fine and there's one more thing i want to do with the lid too that i forgot to do on side one but all right we've just changed the the thickness of the lid okay we just changed the thickness of the lid we're going to go ahead and recalculate the tool pass all right we're going to recalculate the tool pass and we're going to flip to the other side for the lid recalculate the tool pass don't really necessarily need to but you know we just changed the size of the lid so might as well all right and if we preview all sides once again on that lid very quickly let it go through. We should be okay. Now, yeah, again, I'm going to be flipping this board. So alignment holes, I'm going to drill two alignment holes in the corners. Uh, and I'm going to drill two alignment holes in the waste board. They're going to get mirrored over and everything. Um, the uh, still got to do those, but there's also something else I want to do with the lid to give it just a little bit of a subtle touch. Almost done. All right, click on our waist here and no through holes, right? No through holes. Okay, now the last thing I want to do for the lid on the top side, let's go. We're on the top side here. We're on the top. I want to go in. I want to create on a profile cut here. I want to create a round over. I'm going to do a profile tool path. I'm going to cut a quarter of an inch deep. 
0.25. I'm going to use a white side 2050 2050 roundover bit. It's an eighth inch roundover for a very small roundover. I'm going to step over, I'm going to be cutting on the outside of the line, but I'm going to step over negative 0.125. That's the required step over to get the roundover effect for that particular bit. This is going to be my roundover. And it's going to be done before the profile cut. When I calculate this, what that's going to do, let's get rid of this waste for a minute, is let's turn off the color there. Click away the waste here. And what that did was it just gave it that subtle round over on the lid. A nice little round over. Okay. So this is going to be our finished lid here. All right. So we'll have that finished lid. The round over will not be colored black. But, um, it is screaming, like someone said, it's screaming for epoxy fill, right? Uh, that would look good. Nice epoxy fill. But there's our lid. Now, that lid sits inside the base. Wait for it. The lid, we have our profile cut, the pockets. We have the clearing for the pockets, one's a quarter, one the eighth inch in mill. We have our recess and our magnets when we preview that visible tool path. We're gonna have that recess is gonna be sitting down inside of this pocket area, right? Cool beans. Okay, guys and girls, Let's spend 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. I want to show you just two geometric shapes. We'll save them for another day because it's a little bit taxing and everything. But we've got all the parts and everything laid out here and all. It's a matter of just organizing the tool pass. And by the way, if any of you are interested, I'll make these files available to you that you could use um, and stuff. Um, and... Uh, now, John Thompson, real quick, I missed your sentence that says here, what if you just put the club and diamond in the center and use the top and bottom spade and heart and put holes in them in the center for the trump suit? I could do that. Uh, yep, yeah, that could be an option. Um, but I want to kind of keep the scoreboard in the middle. The others are just kind of decoration, but you could do that. But this is my base, and that lid is going to sit right down in the base. And um, the magnets and all are going to hold it. That's going to be our little box. One inch thick base, three quarter inch thick lid. When that lid is recessed down, so from here it'll be uh, five eighths. So we got about one and five eighths of an inch thick of a box, a card box, right? Uh, with a dimension of a uh, little uh, around six. Um, and what was our final dimension? Um, six and a half by nine and three quarters. Okay. A nice, you know, elegant looking, uh, box inside that box is our deck of cards, our five pegs. Uh, we might have room for a couple more in case we lose some or something like that. And then we have our, uh, remaining parts. The one thing that we didn't do is let's switch over here really quickly one thing we got to do there's one thing that we have to do that i i absolutely have to do is we're going to go into node editing on this part right here node editing we're going to cut the vector here and cut the vector here we're going to cut the vector I'm going to cut it back there and we're going to cut it there. 
on this side. I mean, really, it's just a mirror of the other. So that's fine. We'll do that. We're going to take this and hit delete. Get rid of that. We're going to join this with a smooth curve. Okay. And I'd like to have that just a little bit more smooth. So I'm going to go into node editing. I'm going to delete these two hard points right here. And I'm going to pull this curve out just to make it a little bit more, a little bit more flow. Okay. And then here, same thing. I want to delete these two hard points. I want to turn this to a busy A curve and I want to pull that out. Okay. Now on that leaf, it's going to get sized down. These edges, first of all, this is going to get, let's, let's do this first. It's important. This needs to be a four by four size. Four by four. Size, four by four. Size, four by four. Okay, now. The corners. Give me just a minute to think about this, just for a quick second. That's not the appropriate design. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do is I am going to fill at the corners. Um, we're going to go with a uh, half inch radius. And I could have radius my pocket too, now that I'm radiusing this right, you know, so everything kind of fits a little, you know, not so square and all that stuff. I could do a radius on this if I want to soften that up. That's fine. Either way, that, this, this was an afterthought. Um, since that was scaled down, right, since that was scaled down, then my little pegs, they're going to... Uh, you know, when they rotate, they're 
they'll be good. They'll be on the numbers, so I don't really need to size them down. Right? Bear with me. I don't need to scale them. I'll leave those the same. So those three parts, they can get, um, my scoreboards and everything I'm only going to be able to out of this size material I'm only going to be able to get uh, two of the scoreboards out of this size material and uh when you move something, make sure you group that sucker together. Or don't you don't have to, but don't want to throw everything off. Um, all right, so that just tells me my project board, this project board, instead of being, you know, uh, nine inches tall, it's going to be a little bit wider. So um, we're going to go nine and a quarter, typical one by ten. Nine and a quarter, and we're going to go um, we're going to go we're already at seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, we'll go thir 14 inches long. Oh, I'm changing the wrong, changing the wrong thing. Hit cancel. Bad, 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 bad. Make sure when you are changing your board sizes for any whatever, you do it in sheets. You click edit. You change it in sheets. I'll take a piece of material and resaw it. I have a bandsaw. I'll resaw it in half, mill it down to where it's about a quarter inch thick, because I'm not going to use plywood for the scoreboards at all. I'll use hardwood. Uh, we're going to go uh, again nine and a quarter, and we'll go 14 inches long. So a one by ten will be fine. And. I really want to do something decorative around these four edges and I think it might, I don't know. Someone had said, uh, someone had said to use, uh, put Trump on a circle, like arch it. With that particular font that I'm using, it doesn't look good on a circle. Hey, Tom, thank you very much for that. I appreciate you, man. Uh, what are the scores cards for? Um, each, just aside from the, you know, the lid here, right? Which, you know, will kind of, you know, be keeping track of the master tracker, right? Uh, each team will have its little card for, you know, for the tricks, one through 10. And then what's Trump? Along with the pin and everything, you know, this will just be an indicator turning there. And it's just something extra. It's not necessary or whatever. Uh, but um, I, uh, with, you know, with the different sets and things. Uh, okay, I don't need a 14 inch. 
why board um bear with me just a second here uh, I only need I only need uh, nine inches wide so sheets lid or scoreboards edit nine and a half Click OK. I'll show you where the concept came from, Leroy's uh, CNC Woodworks. Leroy, uh, I'll show you where the lid came from. And uh, yeah, and somebody see, JR, you said don't forget about downsizing the pointers, right? Uh, I just, when I just kind of checked those pointers out, I didn't really need to downsize them, but it might look better if I do downsize them. It may look better if I do downsize them. I'm not sure. Okay. So that's that. All right, guys, let's, let's, um, Let's see if I can show you kind of where the concept came from. It's not my idea. The scorecards aren't. But uh, I liked the idea that each team, you know, as the, you know, the main scoreboard is keeping track of things just in case. Drinking, whatever, you know, if we have these scoreboards and all, uh, you know, we can kind of keep track. Each team can kind of keep track of their own thing. Whatever the case may be, it might not be necessary, but uh, it could be useful. But where where the concept came from uh, is there's a little euchre gift box type uh, type of deal. Um, that's uh, it's a kind of a laser cut project, and uh, uh. It consists of, it's got, it's an upright type box. The back of the box is where the deck of cards slides into and the front of the box is where the three, you know, scoreboards kind of come into play, right? So that's just a, you know, just kind of a forethought. You know, I like the idea and I thought, you know, if I if I got this box and everything and you know keeping track on the lid is fine and all, but also we could keep track each of the teams, you know they could kind of keep track on their you know what's Trump could be that could be sitting in the middle, whatever the case may be, right? It's not it's not required, but uh, it's also not not going to hurt anything. Now on these I could I could size these down like uh, Jr was saying, you know scale those as well too, but. Um, uh, that uh let's hit save they didn't they weren't too too big they weren't too big they weren't too big uh right all right so um let's see here we always use the fives to keep score uh you don't need them for playing the game the little scoreboards are a neat way of scoring right yeah yeah that's you know so just a, it's just a little, it's another little add-on, a little something, a little something, something. Okay, guys, let's switch boats for a minute. So this is our this is our board right here, right? Not counting this thing. I don't know what I'm going to do with the corners. I want to decorate the corners of these little boards so bad. <laughs> I'll figure out something to put in there. But uh, I think we have a nice little box here, right? A nice little box. We need to set up our alignment pins to do the two-sided job and all that stuff. You guys have seen me do that before in the past. But I would like to talk about, I just want to give you guys just something to think about to sleep on and maybe try in your shop or in your, your own software this week for just about 10 minutes or so, and then we're going to call it a night. Now, as you saw earlier, as you saw earlier in this dragon design here, let me turn the color off here. There is this little pattern right here. 
this little pattern that uh, kind of encircles or encompasses the inside ring of this uh, cribbage board that I made. And then this border, this little decorative border design kind of uh, encompasses, you know, the outside border to kind of just give it a nice oriental like feel to it, right? Well, there's a lot of things that we can do with uh, geometric signs and things or designs and stuff to create all kinds of neat little shapes and stuff uh, and patterns and things. And what I'd like to do with you, uh, I know it's late and your minds are taxed and stuff like that, but what I would like to do with you is I would like to just show you a couple of shapes that you wouldn't really think that, oh, wow, you know, that's pretty cool that we could turn into something. Now, the first thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how non-difficult it is to make that ornament, ornamental ring. Looks complicated, but it's really not. And the numbers that I use are just numbers that look good that I made for my cribbage board there. But they could be, you could use whatever size number that you want to use, just as long as you keep it consistent. Keep that in mind, okay? Whatever size you want to use, whatever number you want to use, just keep it consistent throughout. What I mean by that is I'm going to create a project here that is 12 inches by 12 inches. Just to kind of get us going. And I'm going to take a guideline. Doesn't matter where I drop it on the board, on the table. And I'm going to right click on that guideline and I'm going to create relative guides. I'm going to create 10 of them. And I'm going to space them at a spacing of, for me, for the little, that little ornamental ring, uh, was a spacing of 0 0.048. And I'm going to create those 10 guides, those 10 lines. Now, I'm also going to create another guideline here going vertical or horizontal, should I say, horizontal. And I'm also going to do the same thing. I'm going to create 10 guidelines going 0.048. And I'm going to create those guides. And that's going to give me this kind of grid, if you will. Now, the grid, I don't need. I only needed those to tell me where my square stops. If you think of this as a rectangle right here, where it starts and stops. And I'm going to draw a line at the point here straight down to here where that kind of grid ends, where the intersections kind of end. And I'm gonna draw a line across the bottom. Okay. Now I'm gonna turn off my grid lines because all I need are those two lines. Those grid lines just help me create those two lines because now I'm gonna take my line, my actual line, and I'm gonna create an array of that line I'm going to create one row of the horizontal line, 10 columns, with a gap of that 0 0.048 in between. 0 0.048. And I'm going to create those 10 lines now. And on my horizontal line, I'm going to create 10 rows in one column, because they're going up, of the same thing going up. And now I'm going to take and select these here. And I'm just going to move them back to that line. And I'm going to select these here and move them down to that line. So it creates kind of a square grid, right? Now, if we take a close look, if we zoom in and take a close look, Let's go to the vectors instead of the 3D view. Let's zoom in and take a close look. We have two shapes that pretty much kind of mimic each other. One's coming up 
over, down, and around. And the other is coming up, over, down, and around. And they're spaced apart by the same distance gap of what they are, right? So with our grid here, think of this first row here being one of those columns. One comes up, one comes down. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to come up and trim these lines coming over here and coming around. And now when it comes around, when it comes around, remember this one's coming down and around, right? So when they come around to one another, there's a space, you know, an equal spacing in between. So we don't come all the way right up to the edge here. So that row stays left alone. And this row, think of equal, you're doing the same thing on both sides. Let's zoom in a little bit more so you can kind of see things a little bit bigger. Now this thing is going to turn the corner. It's going to come up. And remember, it doesn't go all the way to this because there's that space in between, same width space. And this one is going to come down to there. And then this is going to turn in. And this one's going to turn in. Now, if I take my racetrack here of all the remaining stuff, if I take the racetrack here of all the remaining stuff and everything, let me look at my uh, my pass here. Let me make sure that I did not screw anything up before I bring it. That goes there. This one. Goes here. Okay. On this one, this one, doesn't go down. I left. You see that top row there? You see this one at the bottom? I went one row too far. I knew that I went one row too far because I still have two kind of rows of a grid there. There should only be one, right? So quickly, control Z, control Z, get back here, right there. This was supposed to turn one row in. Remember that row should match that row at the top. And again, we're going to come up and then we can turn, right, our corner. And this one's going to, oops, this one's going to come down and turn the corner. All right, so now if I clear away my track, my race track, and I call the race track what those squares that are left, if I remove my race track, Follow it around, follow it around, follow it around, follow it around. Get rid of all that. Do, 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 do. I end up with those two shapes, right? This shape and this shape, right? Have a good one, Leroy's. Thank you. Now, I'm going to take this shape and group it together group it together and I'm going to center it on my board align to center and I want to move I want to rotate this around in a circle uh, on a center depending on what size circle the one now that that size can be whatever it want but it actually my circle was a diameter of 10 and an eighth or 10 and a quarter so the radius was five and an eighth so I'm going to move this up five and one eighth inches five and one eighth inches I'm gonna move this up that's the size tool let's move this upward five point one two five okay now when this thing when I copy these copies around the number of copies, everything is that 0.048, that spacing, the spacing, the spacing between the next one and the next one and the next one, all the way around, the spacing and everything, all of it all plays a role. 0.048 is that number. Remember, I said you use whatever number you want as long as you keep it consistent. Now, when 
it goes to arc around. I'm going to copy 65 times around. I'm going to go 65 times around. That's how many times it needs to go around for my spacing to be consistent. 0 0.48 all the way around between all the parts. All right? Took a little bit of thinking, a little bit of math, but a little bit of trial and error and, uh, you know, to do it. Now, when the parts go, they're going to be kind of arced and everything. And the spacing between the first one and the next one, it's a little wonky looking. So we need to take the right leg here, this leg, and it needs to be tilted at a five degree angle. It needs to be 95 degrees, but in our case, 85 degrees because we're tilting to the right. Now, I'm going to take a guideline. Let's first of all, let's delete all the guides. We don't need them anymore. Delete all the guides. And I'm going to take a guideline and snap it right to this leg here. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to make it 85 degrees. And I'm going to snap it right to that corner there. And I'm going to take this leg in node editing mode. In node editing mode. I'm going to take this leg right here and I'm literally going to use my right arrow key just to bump that over to that 85 degree line. And I really want to be on the line, so drag it over and snap it to the line. It's going to look odd, but it actually looks, it makes sense when, when, when it goes around. And this anchor here, I want to bring that down just a little bit. Only two little modifications I need to do. Now, I need to create my upper rings and my lower rings, and my rings are going to be the same distance as everything else, 0 0.048. So if I take a guideline and I snap it to here, and I create a parallel guideline up, 0 0.048, I only need one guideline this time, create that. And I come down and create, close this, drag that guideline down to here, create a parallel guideline negative 0.04. It's going down. That two, the two distances, the two locations here, this one up here at the top. And this one here at the bottom, that's the radius of the circles that I need to create. So if I came in here and created a circle, let's open this one up, 0 0.4909, if I came in here and created a circle with the center at 0, 0, my board center, with a radius of point or 4.909, and I click create, that's going to create that circle right there, and that top of that circle is going to touch that line. Okay. And this number here, 0 0.5341, that's my magic number, 5.341, sorry, 5.341, if I come in and create... Let me, let me bump this up just one notch. If I come in and create a circle with the 0, 0 and 5.431, I believe that's what my number was. Create. No, 341. 5.341. That's the top of that circle. Now, we have a little bit of overlap at the top. That's good. A little bit of overlap on the bottom. That's good. Now, we're going to take this circle right out here. And we're going to, on this circle, we're going to offset it outward. We can turn off the guidelines now. We're going to offset this circle outward. 0 0.048, 0 0.048. And we're going to create this circle inward. Same thing. And then we're going to take this shape and we're going to copy it around using our circular copy tool, 0, 0 on our board. And we're going to go 65 times around to create that pattern. 
Now the only tedious part about this shape is we now have to go in and there's no shortcut around it. Unfortunately, there's no shortcut around it, but we have to now go in 65 times around and we got to trim, trim those little overlaps, trim, trim at the top and at the bottom. The overlaps where our little thing overlaps our two circles. So we got to trim, trim and trim, trim all the way. Just two clicks, one, two at the top, one, two at the bottom, one, two at the top, one, two at the bottom, all the way around our shapes. And I'll do some on this side so we can take a look at it. I'm not going to do the whole thing all the way around. I want to move on. But um, we create that. Let's do this one here. One, two. And at the top, one, two. Now, we do that all the way around. And we end up with this pattern here. And that pattern, very much this pattern as well around our circulars. And that's how we would create that circular border around, in this case, the dragon that I did, right? But this circular border could be used for a lot of different things. Okay. So that's one kind of little, you know, little geometric shape. Now, again, the only tedious part about this whole thing is, is the trim trim to to blend everything other, that top and bottom, that top and bottom. You got to do that 65 times around, right? Other than that, that's it. So, shape number one down. What do you think? All right. Now, what can you do with a simple arc? Okay. Let's see what we can do with a simple arc. I'm going to take an arc tool. I'm going to draw an arc like this. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to edit my arc. I'm going to go four inches over. And I'm going to go two and a half inches up. Okay. So my height here from the straight line up is one inch. It's got a two and a half inch radius from the center point and it's a four inches long. Arc. Simple arc. Now I'm going to take that arc. I'm going to copy it. Control C or drag and hold the control key down. Right. I'm going to take this arc and everything. Now I'm going to take this arc and I'm going to mirror it, flip it upside down, V for vertical. And I'm going to take this end and I'm going to snap it to this end. And I want to snap it right to the end. I want them both to be perfectly lined up. Snap it right to that end. So, well, <laughs> my snap is, my snap is messing with me. All right, so they're perfectly lined up. I want it snapped there. Now, I want to rotate. I want to take the pivot point, and I want to snap to that location there. And I want to rotate this. Right? I want to rotate this, but I want to rotate it. I'm just going to rotate it halfway. Now, let's take this shape just for a minute and throw it on the center of our board, just so we're centered. Because I'm going to take this shape right here and I'm going to rotate it up. Whoops, that was a scale. <laughs> I want to rotate it up. My mouse keeps wanting to let go. One more time. I want to ro Oh, Laney, come on now. Rotate the blue box. I want to rotate it up and I want to just bring it to the center line there. Now on this one, I'm going to flip it upside down, V for vertical. And I'm going to snap this end to this end over here. Again, lining them up. I'm going to take my pivot point and drag it over to this side this time. And I'm going to pivot that up and rotate it to my line there to create this shape. 
now the lar larger arcs and larger circles and everything and all that we're kind of creating uh, you know what's kind of like what's considered like a triketra uh design and everything but if we go wider and all that stuff we could you know we could do all kinds of you know things now with this shape here with this shape here the I'm going to group it together and I can't really close it because there's overlapping lines and all that and it won't really close, but I'll group it together for a minute and I'm going to find the center point. Now it's saying that this object center point is here, right here, but that's not the center point I want. I want the center point of this kind of triangular shape right here. I want the center point here. And so if I were to come in and take a line, if you will, from here straight down, I can then grab that center point of that line, right? Uh, let me put that line as part of the group. Let me select that line as part of the group. And I'm going to align the center here with the center of my material. Snap it there. Okay. And again, my lines center point. Let's ungroup this for a second. My lines center point needs to be on the center of my material there. And the... If I'm centered perfectly, when I rotate this around... It, should, it shouldn't go crazy like oscillating, like an oscillating spindle sander kind of thing or an oscillating sander. It should just rotate just a perfect circle. So if that's the case, if I take this object and I create a circular copy, let's say 12 times around, zero, zero, and I rotate that around, if it's perfectly centered, it would create a kind of a center copy, right? Now this isn't perfectly centered because it's oscillating. That's why you're, you create these this floral shape. And if I could trim these vectors and all that and I could create a really neat looking flower and all that stuff, right? But uh, I don't wanna do that. Um, what I want is I need to find kind of that true center point. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take a line from here to here, and I'm gonna take a line from here to here, and I'm gonna take a line from there to there, now, if I were to extend this line to here, right, if I were to extend this line from this line to this line, which it's not going to do for me, <laughs> why aren't you extending? Bear with me a second. Let my extend tool get a grip on itself. Not wanting to do. Oh, standby. It's got to be ungrouped. My, it's got to be ungrouped. It won't extend to a grouped line. Um, ungroup. Ungroup. Okay. So if I get my extend, if I extend this line to here, and this line to here, right? Kind of X marks the spot there. Okay. X kind of marks the spot of, you know, where the center, where these two centers intersect and everything. And the, right now, I'm aligned to the center here, not down here. And I still think that even though I use that logic and everything, I still think that's going to be off, but I'm going to go ahead and move that up and snap it to there. And we'll try that rotate again. It actually looks consistent. 
So we'll try that rotate again. Rotate 12 copies around, zero, zero. There we go. So I don't need to go, I didn't need to go 12 copies around. Let's undo that. Let's go six or even four. We'll start with four just so you can see four. Oh, when you do that, make sure you click back on zero, zero on the rotation. But uh, so four copies around, right, to create this kind of floral pattern. Now, of course, the lines, these lines that I used for my alignment, they don't belong, right? Get them out of there. That's the lines. And, okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then twelve, almost like hands on a clock, right? So, twelve hands on a clock, three legs rotated around four times. You know, here's our center hole where our clock center would be. Numbers could be up here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve and we could create a nice little floral pattern, right? Um, that, you know, you, you could pocket out these cuts. Uh, you could trim, you know, what you don't need and everything to group vector, you know, so vectors group together and all. But you could, you could, uh, you could, um, you could, <laughs> You could create the hands of the clock uh, that way, or you could do other patterns. You could get, uh, you know, as creative as you want. Now, if I undo that, let me get rid of the, here, I'm gonna get rid of the lines here, there and there. But, you know, I went on that one, I went, you know, zero, zero, I went four times around. Well, if I went six times around, it creates kind of a double pattern, right? It just mirrors itself. Right, so again, could be something cool, uh, but let's go eight times around. Nope, make sure you're on zero, zero. Eight times around to create that floral pattern. And this is a simple arc that we're using to create these kind of floral flowers, you know, uh, and everything and everything. And, you know, you can trim you could do on your vectors you know uh you could do a profile cut where it's following the lines and you could you know get rid of the inside of the lines uh like if i were to take this part i could try to weld it together and that just creates a gear it doesn't it, i lost everything with the weld right because it only keeps the outside stuff but i could come in here with my scissor tool and I could trim away uh, these lines or whatever to create, you know, whatever shape, I, you know, kind of pattern I wanted to. Um, I could, you know, uh, continue on, whatever the case may be. I could weld this shape together, right, to create that pattern, so on and so forth. All, you know, whatever the case may be, but that's just a simple arc. Now, let's take a look at the arc a little bit in a little bit different way. Okay, same arc. Okay, same arc here. Uh, but this time on the arc, we're going to take the center of the arc and we're going to snap it to the center of the top there to create this shape. And we're going to um uh on the well okay let's take on those two let's take a copy of them and control c control v copy and paste and i'm going to hit the zero key to rotate that two times around, okay? So we've got this arc now, right? Now, if I take this arc, I'm gonna use the mirror tool, and I flip it down, nope, sorry, copy, flip a copy, 
create a mirror copy, right? If I flip that to the bottom, I take this one and flip it to the top. Take this one and flip it to the left. This one, flip it to the right. We start to get this pattern here kind of in the middle that we could, you know, uh, uh, create a dimension shape, but I don't like the way, I don't even know why I showed you that one. I don't like the way it turns out. So let's undo that for a minute. We're gonna stick with our two arcs here, but we're going to create this pattern here. This is the pattern that I want. Let's get rid of this one. I'm gonna group those, or join, not group, I'm gonna join those two together as one. I'm going to make sure that I'm centered and I'm going to rotate that around my center four times. <laughs> Let's try zero, zero. Rotate around the zero, zero four times. Okay. Beautiful little flower there. Now, on that flower, I'm going to create a circle right in the center. I don't know why my mouse is acting up right now. Give me a second. There we go. And of course, however big you want the circle to be, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go this big here. Now, if I offset that circle outward, okay, if I offset the circle outward, uh, let's go a sixteenth of an inch. And I went inward. And inward's fine. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Either one. Either one of the two. So we've got this pretty little four-leaf kind of flower, if you will. If you, you know, uh, this flower, if you will. But I want to turn it. 45 degrees this whole thing. I want to rotate it. So I'm gonna hit it one time. So we're kind of in this pattern Okay now if I have at the end of each one of these points here if I have this same offset circle I'll Hold down the control key I'm gonna group them together. So they're kind of together for the moment And I'm going to stick one right, uh, uh, I was looking to see if you guys had any questions or anything, but I'm going to stick one right on the end, but I want to kind of bring it in just a little bit, almost that 16th of an inch, right, to that inner circle. So I kind of want to snap to there, right? Now, if I take that, and rotate it around four times, around zero, zero. Should put one on each, you know, each thing here, right? Now, if I took this shape, just this shape, Let's move it down here. I don't have a big enough board. I made these this this is this oval and all or this uh, ellipse. I made it too big for. I wanted to do a multi pattern, a big pattern and all, but you'll you'll see it here in just a second. But imagine, let's say I had two of these. I'm gonna I'm just gonna use the control key for this for a minute, and I'm gonna snap these together like they're one ring. Okay. And so imagine if I had. Let's come in here. And let's take. Let's take this and I hold down the control key and I snap these together like they're one ring, right? You start getting this pattern, right? And 
the space I can carve, you know, I can, when I do my trimming and stuff, of course, we'd only have one circle, not two. We'd make sure that we're all aligned. I'm not aligned right now, but I'm just dragging and copying and stuff. But um, I could create a repeatable pattern to create a nice, you know, floral arrangement. Now, when that pattern is of the appropriate size, you know, a little bit smaller and everything and a nice pattern and everything, uh, it actually looks pretty nice, especially when you're V carving it and stuff. And to give you a general idea of what that looks like as a pattern, that's the pattern that we are creating just in a smaller form, you know? So when all the patterns are created and we can use double lines, you see how their, their lines are thicker, right? That's cause you the double lines. Imagine if the software traced this vector if you were tracing this vector to carve it would create a line on this side and a line on this side we're just using a single line here so i could have offset each one of these petals not the center circles and make sure none of the outside circles. I could offset them inward. All right. Hold on. There's an overlap somewhere. Right there. Turn that off, that off, and that off. Okay. Make sure that. Oh, I'd have to, let me, let's do this. Let's do this. Delete. 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 Align to center. I'm getting it back. I'm kind of getting it back to uh, where we were here. Original to start with. Right. And uh, let's take this, this, this. Let's offset this inward. Kind of create that double line. That's what the V carve would carve between kind of thing. And then let's take that object and copy it around four times. Around zero, zero. Right. And when we are trimming with our scissors, just so you know, uh, scissors, we come in here and trim, 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 trim uh, to create that pattern. Okay, so if the V carve toolpath, if I, if I carved that with a V carve toolpath, V carve, uh, 60 degree V bit calculate. Oh, I got three open vectors. Let me close them really quickly. Do, 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 do. I got three open vectors, and where they're going to be open is where my shapes don't come together. Right there. The trim. So take my scissors and trim, trim. Trim, trim. I didn't zoom in enough. Don't worry, they will close this time when I trim, trim. Even though they look like they're not together, they will close. Okay, close that. When I close that, it'll close them together. So one more time. V carve toolpath, calculate, preview the visible toolpath. You know, we get that nice card pattern and everything. Uh, paint that, whatever color you want to paint it. But we don't have the little circles and all that. But imagine if you imagine if we did an offset around it, it creates a reverse effect. Let's take this object here and do an offset outward. I'll go a quarter inch this time. 
and we V carve that. It creates that reverse effect. And it's gonna to want to cut through the material. So I gotta I gotta add a flat depth. I'll go uh, an eighth of an inch. Calculate. But that'll carve every other thing. Preview the visible toolpath to create this pattern. Okay. So imagine a whole you know, kind of sheet of that, right? If you will. Okay. So ellipses, arcs and everything and multiple patterns and all, you know, if you look, this is the arc right here. This is the other side of the arc right here. This is the four arcs. And let's go to the corner. You'll be able to see it a little bit clearer. Let's zoom in. Drag this, zoom in, drag the, oh, don't mess with me. Hold on a minute. It's giving me a hard time. Come in here. I want <laughs> what, what, what? All right. It's not going to let me zoom in the way I want to, but up here in the top corner, one pedal, two pedal, three pedal, four. They were straight up and down, but when you rotate it, right, when you have this and you rotate it, and then you come in and you take and copy that, you flip it top, left, bottom, and you start creating this pattern, left, top, top, right, 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 bottom, bottom, you know, you start to create this pattern and everything all the way around, right? Now, let me undo that. Do, 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 do. And imagine if I didn't have the offset, right? I just had these two. Rotate. And then do that again with that mirror tool. I could go top, top, left, left, bottom, right bottom left bottom right 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 top 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 right so this pattern you start to see it kind of emerge and all from a simple arc right all from a simple arc you know you have uh, this cool pattern now I don't have a board big enough but I'm gonna size this down so it fits on my board here. Let's center it on the board. And uh, let's bring it down just a little bit more. So we have a kind of a border inside. All right. And if I were to V carve this, you know, I have overlapping lines right now. Um, there are lines that are overlapping. So when I get, when I get, uh, uh, when I get, um, oh, what's the word? Uh, I might get a warning about overlaps and intersections and things like that in the design. And that's true. I'll have overlaps and intersections. But let's see what happens if we V-carve this. Reset the preview. Preview the visible toolpath. You know, so... Imagine that being just a simple little decorative design on a coaster or a cutting board or something or a piece of wall art or whatever the case may be. But all it was, it started out as a simple arc, right? Simple arc. We made the little teardrop you know, or the eye, eye, you know, the double arc, you know, and then we copied it around. All right. Last one. Last one. 
Last one. Okay. Now this one, I want you to really put on your thinking cap for this one. Bear with me. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I want to create a new board. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. This is the last one, and everybody's going to bed. It's 11 o'clock, almost midnight, right? Um, I want to save those changes to Euchre Box and all that stuff. Um, all right. This is it. We're going to do a corner decoration, just like you saw on that uh, cribbage board. And uh, we're going to do a 12 by 12. We're going to do a corner decoration and then we're going to end the day. Now, with this corner decoration, uh, we're going to uh, just do one corner and then we'll mirror it to the other four corners, right? So I'm going to draw a line straight down here that'll get trimmed up later. And over here, I'm going to draw a line across here. Now, they're not going to connect, they're just going to be my stopping points of my lines, okay? Now, the dist I'm going to take a guideline here, and I want to be a certain distance in off of my uh, project board. And um, ouch. the distance that I want to be in is about a, a little over half an inch. So I'm going to go in with my guideline. I'm going to create a, I, I don't need a guideline. I'll just draw a regular line. No, I need a guideline. I need a guideline. Sorry. I need a guideline for here and on the top. I'm going to create a guide going down for the, the top line. I'm going to create a guide going down. And I'm going to go 0 0.5879. Create that guide there. And then on this guide here, I want to go 0 0.5879 to the right. Okay. And that's going to give me my starting point, okay, for my border and all that. Now, I'm going to draw a line right at this intersection. Line here to here. And I draw a line from here to here. Okay. All right, let's get rid of the guidelines. Now, we are going to make 14 lines going across. And we're going to make 14 lines going down. But we are going to alternate in the distance between the lines. We're going to go a narrow distance, a wide distance, narrow, wide, narrow, wide. And keep your numbers consistent. Don't all kind of crazy random numbers. We have two numbers. The number for the narrow lines or the width and the numbers for the wide width. Now for me, when I did the dragon and everything, the numbers that I chose for the narrow was 0 0.096 and for the wide was 3 sixteenths, 0.1875, okay? Your numbers could literally be anything that you want them to be just as long as there's one that's narrow and one that's wide and they stay consistent. Narrow, wide, narrow, wide, narrow, wide. When we create the 14 lines, if we count the spaces between those lines, where we if we look at the spaces between those lines, there's gonna be a narrow space, a wide space, a narrow space, a wide space, a narrow space, a wide space, so on and so forth. But the, the lines, the physical lines themselves, there's 14 of them, okay? Don't, don't go crazy. Uh, will the files be available for metal inlays? Uh, if you're talking about the metal inlay video, yes. Uh, I've got to put those, uh, finalize those and get those out. Yes. Um, here, instead of 0 0.096, right, I'm just going to go 0 0.1, okay? Uh, 0 0.1, because that's only 0 0.0, it's only 4,000 more, 4,000 more. Okay, so I'll make it easy, just point one. So I'm gonna create, you, you do a copy and a move, copy and a move, okay? So for me, I'm using keyboard shortcuts. 
control C, control V to make a copy of that line. And then I'm going to move that line 0.1, 0 0.1. Okay. Now you got to click on that line that you just created to, in order to be able to copy and paste it. But this is going to be my wide move. So narrow move, wide move. And my wide move is 3 16, 1875. So narrow, wide, narrow, wide. So when I hit control C to copy, control V to paste, this one's going to be my 0.1875 apply. Rinse and repeat. Click, copy, paste. 0 0.1, apply. That's my narrow move. Click, copy, paste, and 0.1875. Now, when you get to a certain number of lines and rows, you can just grab all of these and then copy them over and move and so you're not doing one line at a time till you get to 14 right I've created here one two three four five lines okay and if I take these lines and I hold down my control key I'm dragging a copy of them and if I snap them Make sure when I snap them, I stay, uh, you know, I snap on the line, right? And it's better for snapping points and everything. You see how I missed that? It's better if you grab it at the bottom of the line so it snaps in, you know, much easier. Now, I have my narrow, wide, narrow, wide, narrow, wide, narrow, wide. So I've got the perfect pattern, you know, and my next one's a narrow. So if I copy all these over, I can get over. But remember now... On one of these lines, I created a duplicate, right? So I got to delete it. Can't have a duplicate. Now, if I grab these lines here, this time I'm going to grab it at the bottom. It's easier to snap. I'm going to grab it at the bottom, hold down that control key and drag it over and snap it to there. All right? And that line that we overlapped, that's a duplicate now. Get rid of that duplicate, okay? Click and delete. So how many lines do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That means I don't need these three. There's my fourteen lines. Okay. Narrow wide, narrow wide, narrow wide, narrow wide, narrow wide, narrow wide, narrow. Now I need to do the same thing here down, but I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I'm going to take these bad boys and hit the control key and copy, and I'm going to drag them over here to the right. I'm going to hit my number zero key twice to rotate that 90 degrees, and then I'm going to come over and grab it by the end of the line here so I can bring it over and snap it right to this line right snap it right there and remember now when we snap that first line that first line is now a duplicate created a duplicate because it was already there right the line was already there so delete that now i have my corner grid all right okay all right copy and paste both lines save time right troy exactly now, I have my corner grid, right? This is kind of where my corner is, and this is going to end up getting mirrored four times around. Now, the pattern that we're going for, let's get a visual reference so you can see the pattern we're going for when it's all said and done. Let's go to this top corner here. Is this pattern here. Now, that narrow roadway, that first narrow roadway is this roadway here. And I want you to see there, I want you to think count the lines right this is my 14th line down here right and I've got a narrow space wide space narrow space wide space narrow wide all the way up so if I were to count where this first narrow line turns right and makes a right turn if I were to count so you can physically know and everything uh, basically it would be one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9. That tenth line is the back of that corner, the ninth and tenth line. That's where it turns right. Now, from the top here, basically, what we have is, basically, we have this big square and this opening, and then where that opening is, that's where it turns right. That's how you know. But I just, if you wanted to count the lines, you could do that too. So what does that mean for us? Let's go over here to our grid. And remember, like I said, if I came in with my scissors in this top corner, and I kind of cleared out around my big square there, that kind of creates that corner, right? And if I cleared out this line here and this line here, that creates kind of that opening on that corner. And right here is where my first row turns the corner. That's where the first row turns the corner. So if I came up with my path and I came up driving along here and I turn the corner here, this roadway is going to come in and it's going to go all the way over to a square that's over here. Okay. Now, coming up with this line, right? This one also is my top row. It comes across and it turns the corner here. And that turns a corner down to a square that's down here. Okay. Now, we only have two paths that we use. The first two paths on the outside. So these other paths on the long lines, not our grid now. The other paths we don't need. Get rid of those. We should only have two. Two roadways between two narrows, right? Narrow, wide, narrow. We should have two roadways. This roadway and this road. I call the roadways the narrow pass, okay? Same thing here. Get rid of all these. I should only have the two narrow roadways. So now you can start to see this corner shape is kind of start to take place or starting to take shape, should I say. Now, this bottom line, between the bottom line and the top line where the top lines turn, this is a clear space here. That's cleared away. Same thing here, that's a clear space there. So you can see the separation between our two paths. Now, this path here actually turns the corner this path here actually turns the corner at the bottom here. And it, it comes over four rows or, you know, three rows or whatever before it turns up. And the same thing here. This one turns the corner here. And oops, don't do that. It, uh, it only comes down a certain distance before it turns in. Now, where do we determine, how do we know where it turns in and everything? We could, from the back, I call this the back of the turn, right? The back of the corner. We could count our lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? We could do that and see, okay, where do we turn in on our seventh one, our eighth one, and all that? Well, what we actually do is we need to kind of do what we did up here. We need to do what we did up here down here, but the down here part, the actual square that we're going to be using is this one. If I cleared a path, oops, let me zoom in. I got to zoom in. If I cleared a path around it, that's our square that we actually use. This stuff out here, we don't use. This stuff out here, we don't use. Now this path, this path, think of a roadway, it goes up, it travels up all the way across and around this big square and then over and connects to that line. Can you see the pattern? Now this comes over around the big square and it comes up and connects to that line. Can you see the pattern start to emerge? Now, this roadway does turn and it comes up here. Okay. 
it does turn and it comes up here and it connects but it doesn't it connects here it stops here it doesn't go all the way up to this okay this roadway does turn the corner and connects to here but it doesn't go all the way to here all right now in this pattern this is trash and that's trash because now you can see that it's turning that corner and this is isolated and this is isolated okay so it looks like an F right there this corner here goes away and then this is isolated and this is isolated and then this path gets cleared here and now we have that corner decoration you're like holy shit how do we figure that out <laughs> well if you look at most and here's a path that clear that roadway out right so there's our pattern okay now when we take that pattern now we have these lines what were these lines for they were just to stop us here so we can trim this away we can trim this away and this away, right? We can get rid of all this. Over here, we can get rid of all of this. And if I take that border and I mirror it, create a mirror copy, flip about job center, flip it horizontally, vertically, horizontally, I can then come in here trim that away trim that away trim that away and that away that and that and I've got this cool little border right now my whisk i went with 0.1 and 0.1875 but your whisk could be however wide you want your border you might want a you might want a wider pattern you know for your your narrow lines might be wider and your wide lines might be wider right that kind of thing so you know uh these patterns although it was like okay you know complicated if you were to look at images that have these patterns you can start to recreate these patterns and start to become good at drawing and everything now let's just for kicks and giggles I'm gonna type in orient tool oriental corner borders and I'm going to go into images and I'll pull that tab over here and you can kind of see that the borders they have when you know as far as the oriental borders and everything they have a little bit of a kind of a a, a a a a pattern you know like like you know like they they have you know these kind of square you know shapes and these paths and everything um they you know it could be a series of you know uh these are cool knots or whatever but um you know these kind of rectangular lines and let me get in here um but these patterns and everything they have this is a cool one too very simple to do right very simple pattern to do think of just down and down up and down and then the path goes around that corner little diagonal there you know kind of like almost like a 45 degree right there trim the lines and then copy that four times over you could draw that if you could draw what we just created you could draw that with no problem right super super quick and easy uh and everything but these patterns they 
you know, from the Chinese style to the weaves to the, uh, to, you know, let's look at these Japanese borders here. Um, you know, these patterns, hell, this looks like the number 5225, 5225, 5225, 5225. I don't know if you can see that. Won't let me really zoom in. Uh, let me see if I can, let me see if I can change my zoom here. Are you, you're not gonna, <laughs> I zoom in and it zooms out. What's up with you? All right, but does that, I don't know if you can see that, but 52, 25, 52, 25, 52, 25, and it's just that shape, but that's what it looks like from a distance, right? Looks like those numbers. It's not those numbers, but that's what it looks like. So um, these borders could very easily be recreated by, and this is the last thing I'll say, because I know I know your brains are like, oh my God, I'm tired. I'm ready to go, Laney. But, and you might know, y'all might not even be watching, who knows? <laughs> but these borders and all, uh, if we look at patterns, then we can look at, we can create all kinds of cool shapes and everything from those patterns. If you'll indulge me for one more quick pattern, I say it's quick, one more fairly quick pattern. Um, bear with me just a moment. File, open, Try Ketra shape. I don't need to save that one because I have the vector already and everything. But those ellipses, you know, those arcs could turn into shapes like this, right? But now, this pattern right here, I drew this earlier. This pattern right here, let me get rid of the lines for a second. Let me get rid of the lines for a minute. This pattern right here, if you look kind of closely, it looks like a T. So there's a T there, or an I, I guess you would. And then there's one that's upside down, right? And so it alternates around. Now when that is carved, so you can have a visual of that. When that pattern is particularly carved, uh, think of that like the center of a cribbage board or something, you know, uh, in all, um, whatever the, you know, whatever the case may be, um, you know, it's just kind of a center, you know, like a design. Believe it or not, that pattern, there is a consistent pattern to it. Right, Troy, 52, 25, 52, 25. There's a consistent pattern to this that consists of lines and circles. Lines and circles. If you look, remember the corner border we just did that was a narrow path? Wide, narrow, wide, narrow, wide. Well, let's look at this pattern for a second. We'll go left and then right. Wide, narrow. Wide, narrow. Wide, narrow. Same way the other direction. Wide, the center. Narrow, wide, narrow, wide. The pattern is consistent and the width, the narrow width and the wide width is consistent throughout this pattern. Straight lines. So if I were to put these lines back where they belong, if we were to look at, if we were to think about this as a straight up and down, not a circle, we have our narrow lines, then our wide line, our narrow line, then our wide line. Now it looks like it's a bunch of narrow lines here, but that's because I drew the center line first and I offset outward from that center. That line gets erased away. But it all stems from, you know, this circle. Now, if I take this 
and I move that to a new layer and I take if I take my circle and I move that to the same layer and I turn off this pattern that looks confusing as all be it but if I turn off everything except for those lines right there the first thing is first thing is we're gonna we need to kind of create our outside circle uh, and if we let's turn the layer on just for a second again I want you to look here you have your outside circle and that's an, a narrow path all the way around and then you have this other narrow path that's kind of broken up by dividers and if we were to count those dividers one two three four five six seven eight if we were to um, have those, you know, those uh, eight uh, dividers, that's just a simple rectangle. And in, in this case, it's three sixteenths of an inch wide. Now, I'll show you how to make it in just a second. But if you recall, and everything, everything, everything is the same as everything. If you recall the corner border we just did, it was a number of lines. Now we did, we had narrow, wide, narrow, wide, narrow, wide, but there was a number, 14 lines. 14 lines over, 14 lines down. When we created that circular pattern, the very first thing, we had 10 rows over, 10 rows down. The lines and the number of lines are important. So our, in, our, in this case, we have lines, they're gonna be circles right circles offsets of circles and all but let's turn off those lines for a minute so we can just see the circle let's count okay let's count so now our circles range from uh, narrow to wide let's go wide narrow wide narrow wide near all the way down right Let's count the lines. Now, we're not going to count this offset. This is a three-eighths of an inch offset. It's the same as this. This, is, this, isn't, this doesn't count for now. So we're going to start this with being line number one. This is line number two. Line number three. Line number four. Watch where my mouse is. Line number five. Line number six. Narrow wide. Line number seven, line number eight, line number nine, line number 10, line number 11, and line number 12, our center circle. Now, if we count, if we have our center circle already drawn, then it's 11 lines out from there, starting with a pattern of wide, narrow, wide, narrow, wide, narrow, wide, narrow, all the way out. Now, is that true? Yes, 100%. Let's look at our circle here. My numbers are going to be 3 sixteenths and 3 eighths. Narrow is going to be 3 sixteenths. Wide is going to be 3 eighths. Double that. If I offset this circle, three, three, we go wide first, so 3 eighths first, outward. Offset, make sure select new is selected. 3 sixteenths is next, 1 8 7 5. Offset, that's my narrow. 3 eighths. Offset, that's my wide. That's my narrow. My wide. My narrow. Now, remember from my center circle here, I need 11 lines, 12 altogether, 11 lines. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I need five more, right? So we just did narrow, so the next one is wide. Oops. Hold on. 
Make sure you're select you're clicked on the right, you know, circle when you're doing stuff. All right, so then narrow. 1875. So pick numbers that you can work with. I know you're late. I know it's late. I know your brain is tasking you and all that and all that stuff, but hang with me if you can hang with me for just a few more minutes. We're going to be done. Uh, next one is going to be narrow and then wide. Now, I should be, let's see here, from my lines, one, two, from my circle, I don't count the circle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's it, done. Now, the last circle is another three eighths inch circle, and that's just my outer border, my outer frame. So we select that and we create our outer frame. Okay? But that's just the outside border. It's not part of the equation. All of this is part of the equation here. Now I have this row here. Okay. I have this row here of narrow and wide circles, also 3 16 and 3 8. From my center line of my board, I want to think of that as the center of my T, that T shape that I was telling you about. That's the center of my T. So these areas are my center of my T. But before, let me let me take this group and move it out of the way. Before I do the T, I need to create my little dividers. Remember that little dividers I said that was eight times around? Well, that was the 3 16 inch divider. So I'm going to take a 3 16 inch rectangle and I'm going to bring it all the way down. And I need that size to be 3 16 of an inch wide, 0.1875. Okay. And I don't care how long it is, but it does not need to be that long. And I only want it, I only want it to be at the center of my board. I want it to be at the center of my board and I want it to be able to go, you know, inside this outside ring. Remember that outside ring is nothing, right? It's it, it, it stays whole. It stays intact. But I want this to be here. Now I need it to be centered. I need this 3 16 inch rectangle to be centered left to right. Because when I revolve this bad boy around, circle array, when I revolve it around eight times on the center, I want to come around just like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to switch back and forth between the images and everything so you can see uh, the images and stuff and also you can kind of get the idea. But let's look at our image uh, vectors. Let's turn this off. Let's turn this off. Now, forgetting that outside ring. Remember that outside ring is left alone. This is my 11th line right here. So that wide narrow gap has a gap in between, a gap in between, right? Every one of those rectangular shapes that we just created is a trim gap. So I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to trim here, here, and there, there, and there, left to right. Come around here, here, left to right here 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 left right now I'm not trimming the rest of these we'll get to them in a minute but left right all the way around let's do the top ring first trim straight line straight down left corn right corn okay when all said and done with this when all said and done with this Almost there. What we have now is we have these divided shapes all the way around with that nice little divider all the way around. Okay, so that's our outside shapes. 
Now from those outside shapes, this wide vector is our T. That's the start of that T that I was telling you about, or I, whatever you want to call it. Now, this lines, you know, the remaining part of this rectangle, in the center, it doesn't get used, right? So in the center, all these lines get trimmed away. Gone, 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 gone. Delete everything in the center of the circle. Nothing, nothing remaining, okay? Get rid of all the trash in the center of the circle. And on the lower part of the circle, the lower part of the circle, these little guys right here, they get trimmed away, okay? So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Let's turn the vectors off for a minute and turn this back on. Here's our inner circle, right? And then we have this a divider, this a divider, this a divider, this a divider, right? So that's our inner circle path. Stick with me, guys. I know you. I know you. Um, uh, I know you're tired and everything, but stick with me. So in here, okay, here's our inner circle right here. And so on our inner circle, we have this, well, first of all, don't need two circles there. Bear with me a second. Okay, so our inner circle there. Now, if you notice, I'm gonna turn this on one more time, one more time when I'm talking. And our inner circle, if you notice, it's a wide, a wide girth, narrow, wide, narrow, that kind of thing. Okay, so the wide is the one that's going to be, not the narrow, not the narrow in here. So we come back in here. This narrow ring is, is, is pretty much kind of just, you know, trash. We need to get rid of that circle, right? It doesn't apply. So I'm going to leave it in there. Uh, but... Uh, uh, no, I'm not. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of it. And our scissors are going to come in and trim up and around to there. Trim up and around to there. We're, we're creating kind of this. We're going to create this whole circle around, you know, and then we have the two trim parts, right? So we have this trim piece, trim piece, right? And... It's consistent. Now, once we do this, once we create this inner ring, once we create this inner ring, divided inner ring, should I say, now the lines that are remaining, these lines that are remaining, they're trash. They are gone. Get rid of them. Get them out of there. Those, oops, we got a, we have a, we have a connection right there. Trim. I trimmed one line too many right there. I got to back up just a second. <laughs> Was it one of the first ones I did? Oh, you're brutal. You are brutal. You are brutal. It was one of the first lines that I accidentally trimmed away. Got to be careful what you trim. Let's come in here and trim, trim. I trimmed that line away by accident, and that made the whole thing. I had to do it all over again. Now, I'm going to make this easy on myself. If I hold down my left mouse button and just move the mouse around carefully, it will trim whatever line it runs over. So I'm going to hold my mouse down in the little narrow path and I'm gonna just come around in a circle make sure I don't touch any of the lines but what's inside that narrow path oh don't do that hit undo let's zoom in a little tighter so I can see and if I need to you know come in here right come in here so I'm gonna come around hold down that left mouse button and just cross over these lines Cross, cross, and then I'll come back and trim that and that. Come around. Okay, that's done. 
All right. Now I can now I can come in and delete these lines. Get rid of those lines. They are, they were they serve their purpose, but they are not used once you trim the upper ring and the inner ring. Now, on our always start with your center line here and everything. Always start with the center line and stuff. And again, we're going to we're going to take and we're going to turn off this layer and turn this on for a minute. I want you to notice that we have a line here and a line here instead of at the top, right? We have one, two, three. I'm talking about gaps. I'm counting gaps right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And notice that it's not quite at 45 degrees, but it's like 22 and a half degrees, right? It's not straight up and down. If we look at ours, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Our gap is good, but we need to rotate. We need to rotate this design by 22 degrees. We're going to rotate 22 and a half degrees, should I say. We're going to do an absolute rotation, 22.5 degrees to rotate that slightly because we want the center of one of these to be at the top. Now, the center of the top here, the top one right there, and the bottom one, that's our I, the letter I without the T arms yet. So now my four lines come into play, my lines. So on my lines here, they're gonna get moved back into place. And these lines, the position of these lines, okay, our center line gets snapped to the center. And uh, to the center and to the center of our board, like that. Okay. Now, if I were to start trimming, I'll just kind of just give you a visual and then and then I'm going to undo what I'm about to do, but I'm going to go in our layers, I'm going to right click and ungroup these vectors here. And think of this top part being my eye in the center, the wide gap, the center. If I were to take my scissors and I were to trim away this path all the way down, all the way down to here, and I were to clear this line out in here, and I were to clear this line out in here, what do you see? You see kind of like an eye, right? So this and this, okay? That and that, that's our pattern. That's our pattern that we're looking for and everything, okay? But that's the pattern we're looking for. So wide, narrow, wide, narrow, that kind of thing. But we only do it that far. Wide, narrow, wide, narrow. Three sixteenths, three eighths, three sixteenths, three eighths, three sixteenths, three eighths, three sixteenths. That's it. We only go that far because it's going to get circled around. We're going to create a circular array around and we're going to create an around eight times. Now, before I, I got to untrim my lines because they're not ready to trim yet. OK, but I just wanted you to see the visually see that eye there that we just created. OK. All right, undo, undo. I'm gonna get rid of, I'm gonna undo all my little trims all the way back to where I have my lines, just my lines. All right, these lines here. I need to copy these lines around. I need to rotate them around eight times, eight's a consistent number, the center, zero, zero. We're 
we're, we're rocking it. Eight times, zero, zero. Come on around. Okay. Now in the center of this, this looks crazy. But don't let it confuse you because we don't use the center, right? Take your scissors and inside that that inner you know circle or whatever, we don't use any of those lines in the center of that circle, right? You could go through and delete them if you wanted to. Uh, go in and, and delete everything inside the circle if you wanted to. But we're going to end up deleting these lines anyway in just a moment and all that stuff. Um, but uh, those, don't let it confuse you. All we care about are these lines from the outer part of this circle up. Well, really basically from this up, right? Up to this one in between there. Everything else gets deleted. It'll get cleaned up and stuff. So, um, and this is, you know, crazy. It looks crazy and all in there, but zoom in and you can, you know, you can move your mouse around. I'm just holding the left mouse button down. I'm not clicking. If you hold the mouse down and you just cross over the line, it'll delete it. And then, you know, you don't have to be in your scissor tool. At that point, you can come in here and select and delete trash. Just don't make sure you don't delete your actual lines that you're actually using, you know, but you can start to clean up things that aren't connected, right? And all that stuff. Not yet. I just want to show you, just clean that up, right? Let's actually start our T's. Let's get this done because I know you're ready to go home or go to bed, but I'm going to take my scissors and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim away. I'm going to, I, I like starting at the top, right? And working my way around because it's just rinse and repeat now. But up here, remember that inner area, nothing there, right? That's just a nice clean row. Inside here, that's where my T starts. That's where my T starts. So I'm going to grab my center line and that center line starts to get trimmed down this side of that center line all the way to there and up this side of that center line get rid of that center line too all right now I can go into here I can go into here I can go over to here I can go over to here okay now you've got that shape that's going around and all right there and stuff and all now on our I the letter I on our I and stuff let's come and turn this off just for a second uh, this as well and turn on this if you notice the letter I that I just drew right the letter I that I just drew it didn't actually go all the way up to this top row on the top here. Now it did over here because they're upside down. If you look, this shape and this shape, it's hard. Now that uh, that just confused you, but they're the same. They're just they're they're ver they're reversed and all. So when I trimmed my lines all the way up to here to this one, I went one too far. Okay, it's on the next one that I do that, but on this one, it's this big guy right here. So let's go back to my lines here, and I'm going to just hit undo for a minute. Just, just to get back to where I, where I belong. And the trimming, this does get cleared out. Yes, 100%. That whole thing gets cleared out. It's open, wide open. The little gap in between also gets cleared out. There's nothing in there. A little space in between. Now, this big boy, this is my big old eye right here. So, this guy here is where my center line starts. Okay. And it comes over here. 
And that big old I comes all the way over to here. And the surrounding it, there is a small narrow shape as well too. So again, I'm gonna get rid of these out here. I'm gonna get rid of these circles. I'm gonna get rid of this. Now this one's backwards. So I'm gonna leave that alone for a minute. But my T comes around and this shape right here Let me just show you what I'm drawing. This T comes around and it leans, it comes in the big wide, the wide three eighths wide comes in and there's a narrow path around that entire T. There's a narrow path like a roadway that goes around that entire shape. There's a narrow path. And that narrow path, I need to make sure that I maintain. Okay, so here, my narrow path, and again, let's. I'm gonna. I need to kind of clean up uh, down here so we can see things. I do need to take my scissors and do a little bit of cleanup out here just so things start to become a little bit more clear. Now, once I get one T drawn, I'm not gonna trim all these others. I'm gonna mirror it all the way around uh, four times, okay? Once I get one T drawn, I'm gonna mirror it around four times. So what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of all this inner stuff on this inside circle, making sure that these lines on the inside are not connected with anything. And now that I know that this is isolated, I'm just gonna select it and delete it. Select, delete. Clean up my mess. The more you clean up, the way things start looking a little bit more, uh, you can start to see them visually a little bit better. Okay? Okay. Now, inside my eye here, that's got to get cleaned up too, right? I got to get my, my letter back. All right? Now, that narrow path, remember, that narrow path comes, that narrow path comes here. Turns the corner, it comes right up to here, comes around and travels around, comes right up and around, right? That narrow shape. But the the narrow shape, uh, we got we, we can't trim here. We're not we gotta get our the rest of our T, the rest of our T, right? Our T down here, and it's over here actually. So undo this right there undo this because the t actually comes here it comes down and over to there it stops right there that t comes down and stops there okay this guy the t comes down and stops there I don't know if you can see that white space, that T there, right? And now our narrow path, clean that up, comes around, comes here, comes down, around, Oh, 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 around and up. Oops, be careful what you're running into. Around, 
you should start to be able to see that big wide T much clearer now. Okay, that path. This. Okay. Shape there. And this. Let me get my white. Let me get my narrow path finished. Narrow path comes down and around. Oh, oh, undo and around and up. And then our big wide path in here comes in there. You should be able to start to see that pattern right there now. Let's clean this up. Clean this up. Clean this up. You should be able to see that one pattern right there. Now, we're done. We're going to mirror it around four times and done. Here we go, guys and girls. So, I'm going to take a pair of, I'm going to take a line, a line, okay? one single line and I'm going to draw a line straight up here one single line straight up I'm going to take that line and I'm going to break this up into essentially um, one two three four five six pieces so we're going to wrap around the center Uh, six is not the right answer. Is it eight? I don't think it's eight. Let me see here. Bear with me a second. Eight is the right answer. Okay. So it is going to be eight. Bear with me just a moment. On my lines here, this, I'm going to take the scissors and I'm literally going to trim everything on this side of the line and get rid of it. on this side of the line get rid of it and I'm going to delete All of this, keeping this kind of corner here, I'm going to take my scissors and trim that line away, that line away, that line away, that line away. I'm going to trim away that, that, and that. And I'm left with this line. I'm going to get rid of that all the way up. Okay, and I've just created a wedge, a circle, a wedge of that whole thing. Holy bajolies. Now, I'm going to move this wedge for a second because it just snaps right to zero. I'm going to move it out of the way. And you see I got a line missing right there. I need to join this guy, this right here, this line. I need to join it with a straight line, not that. I need to take this and this, and I got to join them together. There's I got some pieces that are that are stragglers. So I've got this vector that has, you know, it, it needs to connect there. So I got to join it with a straight line. Close that off. Same thing over here. I've got 
this vector that's got to get joined with a straight line to close that off. Okay. So I want to make sure that, you know, I didn't have that any inconsistencies. Let's put that wedge back there. And I don't really need the wedge, uh, but I, you know, uh, I, I do want to go into uh, node editing and I want to delete this span on the left and this span on the right. And I want to take all of this and I want to circle it around zero, zero, four times around to create that pattern. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, if I come in here and I uh, go to my join tool, um, I got to join and close all the vectors. I'll have 25 closed vectors here. And uh, here, I want this I, the dividing lines, uh, there, there, and there. Those dividing lines, those four dividing lines. I want to trim that. I want that I to be filled in. Right, so I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna trim right there to get rid of that line. I'm gonna trim right there to get rid of that line. There's another one right there to get rid of that line. And right there to get rid of that line. So there's my pattern. Now, if I were to uh, come in here and V-carve that, just for kicks and giggles, uh, I'm going to do a flat depth of an eighth of an inch. Uh, 60 degree V bit. I'll use an eighth inch end mill. Calculate. Anyway, that long hole messed up. Uh, and it's a different pattern than what we created earlier, right? But it's a hole. It's a long uh, messed up like, oh God, what was that less than amount, right? But it's just to show you how circles, lines, arcs, whatever the situation is, I mean, there's a pattern, narrow, wide, narrow to a lot of things, you know, your borders and all that stuff. And it's not always that way, but uh, for the most part, so that's, that's the pattern like this. If we added another line to the mix, if we offset this outward, Uh, let's go narrow. Three sixteenths, one eight seven five. We offset that, and we recalculate that. Creates a reverse effect, right? So reverse effect. Preview the visible toolpath, and that's it, guys and girls. I, I appreciate your time uh, and everything, but uh, a completely different pattern. So here's a completely different pattern, you know, with that reverse effect. And this could be, you know, filled with epoxy or something. It could be a nice little pattern for a platter or something, you know, cut out the circular shape, whatever the case may be. Let me turn off the color so you can actually see what's happening here, right? Uh, think of it almost like a marble maze, right? You know, uh, that kind of thing. But um, uh, a, you know, maze runner type of design, you know, or something, whatever the situation may be, but... Thanks for hanging out with me for creating these. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to create these patterns. If you will notice this pattern that we've created here and this pattern, the one I created earlier today, are two completely different patterns, right? So they are, you know, I didn't want to, you know, do the, the same thing and all, but, oops, I don't know why I'm doing that, but let's fill it in with color. But these patterns, this pattern here and reset the preview and this pattern here, two completely different designs. The way the vectors and everything and the T's connect and all that are completely different. You know, these two little swatches here and stuff. 
Um, but it's something you can have fun with. And uh, it's not just only fun, but it also makes you think. And if you can design and come up with your own border designs and all that, or this or that, you know, designs, you know, around your letters or whatever the situation is, it really opens up the doors for you all. All right, it's midnight. Holy cow, we're done. Done. Brains are wiped. Gotta go. See you tomorrow. All right, everybody. Until next time, thanks for hanging out for all of you that stayed up till midnight with me uh, to indulge me on this little geometric pattern path. But uh, there are, um, I'll make all of these patterns available uh, in a DXF format or SVG and DXF. So you can import them in and play around with them. Uh, all the different patterns and stuff that, you know, one may want to play with. But also in those corner borders and stuff too, the corner border and all. But yeah, have fun with it. All right, everybody. Thanks. Hanging out. It's midnight. We're going to bed. See you tomorrow. Next or next, not tomorrow. Two Tuesdays from now. We'll see you in the next one. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for the super chats for all you super chatters. I appreciate you. Y'all have a good night.